What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Omni Sensei. Welcome to, What If I Was Reborn in Naruto with Dracul Myhawk Template. Part 2. If you see the like button, convince him to watch anime with you, but secretly put on redo of the healer while his mother is in the room. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Why did you all come out early? Don't you think this exam was difficult? Ten Ten was curious about how Ryujiro, Hinata, and the others managed to tackle such difficult questions on the exam paper. She had to rack her brains just to barely pass this exam. Now, her spirits were dampened by the difficulty of the first exam, and as for the second exam, all the candidates were in for true hell. Ryujiro and the others shook their heads one after another. However, there was one person who came out of the exam hall that caught Ryujiro's interest. With white hair and a refined demeanor, wearing glasses, he looked like a scholar. Kabuto seemed to notice Ryujiro's gaze and gave a faint smile before turning to leave with the others. That was Ryujiro, whom Orochimaru mentioned. He's really unusual. They should be cautious of him in the next exam. Orochimaru's plans cannot afford any interference. Ryujiro. Naturally, Naruto also participated in this exam. It's Naruto? Yeah, Ryujiro, the exam was really tough. Luckily, I managed to pass with some luck. Humph, Naruto, you clearly cheated. At this moment, Sakura, who was behind them, looked at Naruto disdainfully. Now, Team 7 was assembled, Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto. Sasuke leaned against a tree, glancing at Ryujiro from afar. Sasuke still possessed Uchiha's pride. However, Sasuke couldn't feel that same pride in front of Ryujiro because the gap in strength between them was too vast. A year had passed, but Sasuke still had the Sharingan of two Tomo. Unless something significant happened to him, the evolution of his Sharingan depended on his emotions. If Sasuke experienced something on the scale of massacre of Uchiha clans again, Ryujiro wondered if Sasuke would immediately unlock the Mangekyo Sharingan. But that's unlikely. This Chunin exam didn't have a so-called 10th question, so most people managed to pass the first exam. Now, there were many more Genin candidates gathered on the field than Ryujiro knew from the original story. By this time, Kabuto had already mixed in with Naruto. After a while, the candidates on the open ground received summoning messages from their respective teachers. It was time to head to the second exam location. And what Ryujiro was looking forward to was this second exam, the Forest of Death. The Forest of Death, also known as the 44th Training Ground, was surrounded by over 44 locked entrances. Inside were rivers and forests, with a tall tower in the center, about 10 kilometers from the nearest entrance. The rules of the second exam were simple, just like in the original, each team would be given a scroll, either the Heaven Scroll or the Earth Scroll. Their task was to collect both scrolls and bring them to the central tower. This exam carried the risk of death, as ninja from various villages had signed death agreements. They all harbored ill intentions, wanting to eliminate fresh blood from enemy villages. The Earth Scroll was now in Ryujiro's hands, while only a few teams possessed the Heaven Scroll. These teams were like sheeps among wolves, targets for other ninja teams. So, I announce. The second exam officially begins. Ibiki Marino announced solemnly. As soon as the exam began, many teams immediately set off to chase the team with the Heaven Scroll. This exam posed a threat to life, and teams with the Heaven Scroll knew that if they were caught, their lives would be in danger. Ryujiro's observation hockey had long locked onto the team with the Heaven Scroll. Currently, those people weren't far away and still within Ryujiro's perception range. Although observation hockey could sense the enemy's presence and predict their movements, it had its limitations. With Hinata and the others, Ryujiro quickly headed towards the team with the Heaven Scroll that he had locked onto. Apart from some insignificant teams, there was also a powerful ninja following the team with the Heaven Scroll, seeming to be from Konoha. But that guy. Yoroi, Kabuto, Misumi although they appeared to be genin on the surface, in reality, these guys were all spies Orochimaru had sent in Konoha to gather intelligence. Ryujiro, the team ahead is also from our Konoha. Shouldn't we team up with them? Ten Ten, who had been following behind, suggested. Ryujiro shook his head. There's no need. The fight will be over soon. They were just a few grass ninja. Hinata and the others could handle them without Ryujiro needing to intervene. Moreover, Kabuto and his team's true identities weren't Kanoha ninja. There was no need to cooperate with them, and if these people acted foolishly, Ryujiro wouldn't show mercy. Kabuto and his team noticed Ryujiro and his group following them. Unaware of the situation, Yoroi revealed a sinister smile. Those Kanoha brats behind us, let's kill them all. Kabuto's expression suddenly turned cold. Idiot, do you know who's leading them? 
After being in Konoha for so long, you still haven't gathered any intelligence? Kabuto. What do you mean by that? Yoroi's face also grew cold, staring at Kabuto with icy eyes. Heh <laughs> heh, didn't Orochimaru-sama remind us of that boy before? Yoroi's expression suddenly froze. Is he the kid Orochimaru-sama mentioned? Before the operation began, Orochimaru reminded them that they could attack any team except for Ryujiro's. That was Orochimaru's order. Even though Yoroi was dissatisfied with Kabuto, what Kabuto said wasn't wrong, and he could only swallow his anger. Soon, figures darted past Yoroi's group. The Grass Ninja could only give up on the Heaven Scrolls in their hands and search for other targets. The chased Grass Ninja teams now had sweat dripping down their foreheads. Why were these Kanoha Ninja so relentless in their pursuit? Could it be that those brats already knew they had the Heaven Scrolls? That was impossible. It's just a few brats. Compared to the three who chased us earlier, they seem much weaker. This exam allows killing. If we kill these Kanoha ninjas, there's nothing wrong. But the grass country is still an ally of Kanoha. Wouldn't it be inappropriate to kill them? One of the grass ninja laughed coldly. The world of ninjas is inherently filled with bloodshed and battle. If you have such concerns, you're not fit to be a ninja. As long as we get the earth scroll from them, we'll definitely be the first to pass this exam. Exactly. The ninja world didn't need so many concerns. Ninjas who had too many concerns would ultimately die by someone else's hand. Kill them. Several grass ninjas erupted with murderous intent. The next moment, a sword aura and a figure flashed past them, leaving the three grass ninjas' faces extremely stiff as they felt a sharp pain in their waists. Their sights gradually shifted downwards. One sword style. They didn't even know what happened, as they were cut in half by Ryujiro in an instant. Hinata, who had never seen the scene before, Ten Ten and others turned pale in an instant, and they leaned against the tree and kept vomiting. Only Niji reluctantly endured it, but his face also didn't look very good, but he didn't react as much as Hinata and others. Ryujiro, who had long been numb to these killings, didn't feel anything. Now they had successfully obtained the Heaven Scroll. You can use the Sharingan so proficiently at such a young age. Indeed, they must be from the Uchiha clan. To think that I have to use some of my abilities to deal with you. Orochimaru's gaze was chilling as he looked at Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura. Due to Ryujiro's influence, the current strength of Naruto and Sasuke had increased at least twofold compared to the original. Even Orochimaru had to use some of his true abilities. A Raisingan? Has Jiraiya already returned to Konoha? Orochimaru glanced at Naruto, who was now covered in wounds, murmuring to himself. Although I still wish to obtain Ryujiro, the Uchiha clan's power is not to be underestimated. Sasuke's expression suddenly darkened. His implication was that the Uchiha clan's Sharingan power was inferior to Ryujiro's. Damn it. Damn it. Sasuke felt a surge of anger. What he lacked now was strength. Wherever he went, he could hear people talking about Ryujiro's strength. Ryujiro. Ryujiro was just a common civilian. Why? Why did his power surpass that of a ninja with Uchiha blood like him? With just that level of power, how could he possibly defeat that man? The vengeance for his parents, when would he be able to seek it? When would he have the power to kill Itachi? Too weak. He was too weak. Suddenly, Orochimaru looked at Sasuke with interest, a twisted smile appearing on his face. Nice eyes. It seems you have potential worth developing. Perhaps you're suitable as a replacement for Ryajiro. Sasuke's young heart suffered another heavy blow. I'm not that guy's replacement. I'm a ninja of the Uchiha clan. Sasuke roared like a madman. Sasuke, let's defeat this guy together. Naruto's resilience once again compelled him to stand up. But Sasuke, driven by anger, had lost his mind. Naruto, shut up. You're just a weakling. Without Ryujiro, you're nothing. I can handle this guy on my own. Sasuke Kuen. Sakura looked at the unfamiliar and indifferent Sasuke in disbelief. The Sasuke in front of her scared her. The Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails is quite troublesome. Orochimaru's figure disappeared suddenly, leaving behind an afterimage. In an instant, the cold Orochimaru appeared before Naruto and delivered a heavy punch to his stomach. Bah! Naruto, after spitting out a mouthful of water, directly fell unconscious. Sasuke broke out in a cold sweat. His Sharingan hadn't kept up with Orochimaru's movements. Just as Sasuke was about to throw a kunao, his body suddenly froze. The kunai fall onto a tree trunk. Paralysis Jutsu. Sasuke's body was inexplicably restrained. No matter how he struggled, he couldn't break free. The power of the Uchiha clan, although you're Itachi's brother, your powers can't even compare to his, the gap between you and Itachi is like an abyss. Sasuke's heart felt like it was being scraped layer by layer with a knife. Who are you? Why do you know about Itachi? Have you seen him? Orochimaru smirked. Who knows? Suddenly, Orochimaru's neck stretched like rubber, and before Sasuke could understand what was happening, he was hit with a cursed seal. Sasuke Kuen. Seeing this scene, Sakura's face turned even paler. Ah. Burning. Stinging. Sasuke hoarsely roared in agony. Sasuke, if you want power, come find me. Right now, you're too weak. Weak. Being called weak by someone and the intense pain made Sasuke tremble all over. 
After the paralysis jutsu was released, Sasuke collapsed weakly to the ground. Orochimaru, with a cold gaze, looked at Sasuke, who still had a cold smile on his face, gradually disappearing. However, in that instant, a reddish-black slash came rushing like a comet. Orochimaru's eyes shrank to pinpoints, and he had no choice but to temporarily flee. With a loud bang, the slash split a huge tree trunk instantly. Orochimaru looked coldly at Ryujiro. Ryujiro, I didn't expect us to meet so soon. Who's that person? Hinata and Niji felt the cold chakra emanating from Orochimaru, and their bodies trembled involuntarily. Very dangerous. That cold demeanor and chakra were like that of a venomous snake. Hinata, Niji, you guys go to the central tower first. I'll be there shortly. Ryujiro looked at Orochimaru indifferently. Ryujiro? Hinata approached with some worry. Ryujiro gently patted Hinata's head and said, Don't worry, I'll arrive safely. After hesitating for a moment, Hinata chose to trust Ryujiro. Ryujiro, please stay safe. Okay. Ryujiro looked at Orochimaru and glanced at the already unconscious Sasuke deliberately. It seems you've already placed the cursed seal of heaven on Sasuke. Orochimaru's expression changed drastically as he carefully assessed Ryujiro. To know even about the cursed seal was surprising. Ryujiro Kuen, I'm afraid you don't understand that the more you know, the faster you will die. With that, Orochimaru's body erupted with fierce killing intent. At this moment, Sakura, not far away, was completely frightened by the killing intent emanating from Orochimaru. This was a battlefield. At this moment, Sakura was completely a burden. The gap between her and these two was too great. Ryujiro and Orochimaru stood on opposite sides, disdainfully smiling. So, are you trying to kill me? If possible, Orochimaru did want to kill Ryujiro. However, Orochimaru knew that Ryujiro's strength might be even more terrifying than he had imagined. Moreover, this was Konoha village. If too much commotion was caused, his actions would be discovered by the village's ninjas, and his subsequent plans would be difficult to carry out. Watching Ryujiro's calm demeanor in the face of such a terrifying figure, Sakura's heart was in turmoil. Facing such a terrifying person without any hint of emotion, it was no wonder he was hailed as the most genius student in the history of the Ninja Academy. Hehe, <laughs> Ryujiro, you're joking, right? With your current strength, I feel you might rival Akage. I don't want to get into trouble by getting stuck here with you. Ryujiro, let's meet again next time. Just as Orochimaru was preparing to use ninjutsu to leave, Ryujiro suddenly disappeared from his sight. With a rumble sound, tree trunks were pierced, creating large holes. Ryujiro directly kicked Orochimaru, catching him off guard. And that strength? It was undoubtedly Ryujiro's full strength, amplified by the sixth gate. Orochimaru hadn't even reacted yet. A resounding crash echoed through the air, swirling up clouds of dust that erupted with tremendous force, forming a wave of wind. Cough, 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 what's happening? This Chunin exam is a disaster. The three figures emerging from the dust were none other than Shikamaru, Choji, and Ino. They scrambled to their feet, brushing off the dust and gazing at the massive crater before them, as if a meteor had struck. Their minds went blank. Did a meteor just fall? Just as they pondered, another figure appeared before them. Is that Ryujiro? Ino exclaimed in astonishment. They used to be classmates with Ryujiro, but now he had become a well-known and acknowledged ninja in Konoha. As for their chances in this Chunin exam, they weren't too hopeful. Ryujiro cast a casual glance at the three of them. You'd better leave now. Otherwise, I can't guarantee your safety if you get involved later. What? Are they just burdens here? Suddenly, Shikamaru's expression changed drastically, his eyes filled with terror as he stared at the eerie figure emerging from the crater. He immediately grabbed Ino and Choji. Choji! Ino! Let's get out of here! Orochimaru's overwhelming killing intent finally burst forth. His eyes alone immobilized his targets. Such terrifying killing intent had likely claimed countless lives to amass such dread. Orochimaru, a former executioner in the Great Ninja War, had conducted numerous human experiments over the years, resulting in even more gruesome deaths. Shu, Orochimaru's legs transformed into serpent-like tails, moving at several times their previous speed. Hidden shadow snake hands. Several venomous snakes shot out from Orochimaru's sleeves, like a tidal wave crashing toward Ryujiro. Not only that, but the mouths of these snakes also spewed out many sharp iron swords. Under this sharp onslaught, even corpses would struggle to remain intact. Such boring tricks. With a mere swing of his blade, Ryujiro unleashed a slash tens of meters high, cleaving through the snakes and leaving no trace of their bodies. An S-rank slash. Ryujiro, the secrets you possess are truly enviable. Orochimaru, deliberately concealing his presence, attempted to sneak attack Ryujiro from behind, aiming his sharp fangs at Ryujiro's neck. Once he implanted the curse mark on Ryujiro, even if Ryujiro were stronger, he wouldn't be able to resist him. Hum, in the instant Orochimaru bit down, a smirk appeared on Ryujiro's face. Haki coated Ryujiro's neck, causing Orochimaru to scream in pain instead. Even his teeth shattered upon impact, and Orochimaru's face twisted in agony as he clutched it. Orochimaru, did you think I couldn't see through your little plan? Since I understand you, I naturally know what you would do. Trying to place a curse mark on me. 
I simply left myself open on purpose to lure you in. Orochimaru glared at Ryujiro angrily, his heart aching as he looked at his shattered teeth on the ground. This brat. He looked harmless on the surface, but why was he so cunning? What was that black substance on his neck? It felt like biting into stone just now. Could it be some kind of special Kekiai Genkai? Could a civilian like Ryujiro really awaken a special Kekiai Genkai on his own? The ninja world harbored too many unknown secrets. Even Orochimaru couldn't guarantee he knew everything about it. A trickle of blood escaped Orochimaru's lips. Ryujiro, continuing this fight won't benefit either of us. Let's call it quits here. In the end, Orochimaru chose to withdraw. After all, his purpose in coming to Konoha wasn't to fight Ryujiro. Fine. Ryujiro agreed readily, sheathing his sword. Orochimaru was taken aback. He hadn't expected Ryujiro to agree so readily. What did Ryujiro mean by attacking him just now? Orochimaru, the reason I brought you here is because I have something to tell you. Within Ryujiro's observation hockey range, there were no other ninjas nearby. He whispered a few words into Orochimaru's ear. Orochimaru's eyes contracted violently, as if he had heard some earth-shattering secret. Is what you're saying true? Who knows? Ryujiro deliberately teased, wearing a mischievous smile. Orochimaru was about to say something, but Ryujiro had already disappeared from his field of vision. Those words just now were like thunder in his mind. As a mad scientist, he yearned for the secret of immortality and the Kekiai Genkais inherited by ninjas. The organs of Kekiai Genkai holders. Such a concept had never crossed Orochimaru's mind before. With the genes of a ninja's Kekiai Genkai, one could potentially unlock the secrets of their bloodline. Although chakra nature couldn't be manufactured, the mutation of organs for Kekiai Genkais might not be impossible to crack. Mass-producing mutated organs. And Orochimaru had only sought to obtain Sasuke as a vessel, never considering the secret of unraveling the Uchiha Kekiai Genkai. The words spoken by Ryujiro seemed to have opened a new door for him, revealing a secret he had never known before. The eyes of the six paths, said to control life and death, were the ultimate evolution of the Uchiha eyes. According to records, the ultimate evolution of the Uchiha clan's eyes should be the Manjiku Sharingan. What Ryujiro said was true or false, Orochimaru dared not confirm. But judging from Ryujiro's current level of mystery, not only did he know about curse marks, but he also knew about the forbidden jutsu Orochimaru had developed. Faced with Ryujiro, Orochimaru felt like all his secrets were laid bare before him. What a terrifying kid. Konoha didn't produce a genius, but a monster that devours everything. A trace of fear crept into Orochimaru's eyes. Not long after Orochimaru left, Anko stared at the ravaged earth and shattered trees, feeling stunned. This chakra, it's Orochimaru's, no doubt. But what happened here? Orochimaru fought someone here, and the power was so terrifying. This Chunin exam is too strange. Anko's face grew grave. If it was related to Orochimaru, this exam was definitely not simple. Should she continue the pursuit? After scanning the destroyed surroundings, she made up her mind. She wouldn't pursue Orochimaru's trail any longer. She must report the situation here to the Hokage immediately. Central Tower. Hinata and others were still on their way. In an instant, several shuriken flew towards Niji, who was holding the Heaven Scroll. Clang, clang. Clang. Niji hid behind a tree trunk, and those who were attacked also took cover behind the trees. He he he. The ninjas from Konoha have quite sharp reflexes. Six ninjas from the Takigakure emerged from the shadows, wearing sinister smiles on their faces as they mockingly looked at Niji and his companions hiding behind the trees. The strength of the Takigakure ninjas was actually not strong. When Niji and Hinata confirmed that these ninjas were not very powerful, they conveyed a message to Ten Ten and Lee. Dealing with the Takigakure ninjas was not difficult for Ten Ten and Lee with their strength. The Takigakure ninjas also underestimated the strength of the Konoha ninjas. They didn't even realize from the beginning that Niji and Hinata were from the prestigious Hyuga clan of Konoha. If they had recognized them early on, they might not have attacked Niji. Niji strolled out leisurely, playing with the Heaven Scroll in his hand. You want this? The leader of the Takigakure ninja sneered, since you know, just hand it over quickly. Perhaps we can consider letting you go since you're Konoha ninjas. Humph, just you guys. Ten Ten. Lee. Attack. Swish. The Takigakure ninjas didn't even realize that Ten Ten and Lee were no longer behind the trees. Their carelessness made them even more flustered when they saw Ten Ten and Lee in front of them. Leaf Hurricane. With a loud bang, the Takigakure ninjas were instantly sent flying and crashed heavily into the tree trunk, knocking them unconscious. Realizing that he had been fooled, the Takigakure ninja twisted his head furiously to look at Niji. But Niji had already disappeared. Gentle Fist, 8 Trigrams, 64 Palms. Niji Spiakugan was filled with indifference as he struck the Takigakure ninja repeatedly, the rapid successive attacks leaving the Takigakure ninja with no chance to escape. Even the armor on his body was torn open by Niji's high-speed attacks, revealing cracks spreading out. With a loud bang, the Takigakure ninja was sent flying, the immense impact leaving shallow marks even under Niji's feet. Bang! The tall trees shook violently for a moment, and the Takigakure ninja was completely embedded in the tree. 
As for whether he was alive or dead, Niji didn't care at all. When the Takigekyo ninja attacked them just now, Niji understood. In the ninja world, it's either you die or I perish. Being kind to enemies is being cruel to oneself. The remaining Takigekyo ninjas were all dealt with by Hinata. Hinata's strength was even greater than Niji's, so dealing with a few Takigekyo ninjas was effortless for her. Soon, after Ryujiro arrived, they reunited with Hinata's team. With all three Heaven Scrolls gathered, Ryajiro's team became the first group to reach the Central Tower. After that, Gara's team also arrived at the Central Tower. It's them, they're actually the first team to reach the Central Tower. Temari and Kankuro couldn't believe it as they watched Ryujiro's team. As for Gara, his gaze had been fixed on Ryujiro the whole time, and his body was trembling because he was suppressing his murderous intent. During this period, Gara hadn't been affected by Naruto's talk no jutsu, but he had become a genuine bloodthirsty monster who enjoyed killing. Gara believed that only strong people were worthy of being hunted by him, and Ryujiro happened to be the prey he had been waiting for. He couldn't wait to start the next round of exams. Feeling Gara's cold gaze, Ryujiro paid no attention to it at all. Although Gara's strength at this stage was indeed formidable, he still had some shortcomings in front of Ryujiro. Of course, Ryujiro was also looking forward to a battle with Gara. It would be interesting if it led to the emergence of Shikaku within Gara. The Chunin exams were expected to end in a few days, and Ryujiro's team didn't plan to stay at the central tower all the time. After parting ways with Ten Ten and Lee, Ryujiro's team returned to the Hyuga house. Even though they had made it through the forest of death the fastest, they still felt uncomfortable in such an environment. Moreover, Ryujiro's body was still stained with blood. After Hinata and Ryujiro entered the bathroom, Niji couldn't help but mutter. Hinata-sama and Ryujiro relationship seems to be developing quite quickly. After about half an hour, Ryujiro and Hinata emerged from the bathroom together. Niji followed behind them. In the following days, Ryujiro didn't rush to practice. His progress was not something that could be easily improved now. Character Template, Dracul Myhawk, Character Unlock Progress, 86%, compared to himself a year ago, Ryujiro's strength had improved significantly, and he had accumulated enough experience from battles in his spiritual space with Myhawk. At present, Ryujiro could already hold his own against Myhawk in the spiritual space. But in terms of Flying Slash, Myhawk strikes were still much stronger than Ryujiro's. This was the only aspect Ryujiro was dissatisfied with. Ryujiro had been pondering the mysteries of the Flying Slash recently, but being impatient was useless. Sometimes, it was good to relax one's nerves for training. Three days later, the second round of Chunin exams finally concluded. On the day the passing candidates were announced, almost all the examinees felt the cruelty of the Chunin exams. There were originally 26 groups with a total of 78 people. But only 21 passed. And the ninjas who died in the forest of death had already been cleared out. From the original Konoha 11 all passed the second exam, but Sasuke's changes were quite noticeable after encountering Orochimaru. Sasuke became even more aloof, and his cold demeanor would deter anyone who tried to approach him. The seed Orochimaru planted in Sasuke had gradually taken root and sprouted in his heart. The next exam was the preliminary round of the Chunin exams, which was the real deal for Ryujiro. Two days later, all the candidates who passed the second exam gathered together. In the hall, just like Sasuke, Gara's and others' gazes were all focused on Ryujiro. For them, they were only interested in Ryujiro. Feeling their gaze, Ryujiro paid no attention to it at all. Only Gara could spark a bit of interest in him. As for Sasuke now, although his strength would increase to some extent under the enhancement of the curse mark, in terms of sheer power, he was still not as good as Gara. The previously noisy environment quieted down instantly with the appearance of Hiruzen. After the hall became quiet, the subsequent examiner, Heiei Gekko, appeared. This exam is the third round, the preliminary round of the Chunin exams, which is the elimination round. Those who are eliminated will exit this Chunin exam, only those who pass can participate in the final round. The words of Gekko made all the examinees present look serious, as this exam was incredibly important to them. Once they failed, they would miss the opportunity to advance to Chunin. Although there were 23 people who passed this exam, Kabuto worried that he wouldn't be able to control his own strength in the combat match and feared that revealing his identity would affect Orochimaru's plans. In the end, he found an excuse of feeling unwell and withdrew from this Chunin exam. So, there were only 22 examinees left. The 22 people were divided into 11 groups, and they determined their opponents by drawing lots. Some people prayed while drawing lots that they wouldn't draw two powerful opponents. Currently, the ones most examinees didn't want to encounter were Gara and Sasuke. As for Ryujiro, although there were rumors of Ryujiro being a genius in other major villages, they all believed that a teenager with such formidable strength was intentionally spread by Konoha to confuse them. So, apart from ninjas from their own villages, no one paid too much attention to Ryujiro. The Konoha ninja who knew Ryujiro's strength didn't hope to draw Ryujiro as their opponent. Even if they had a thousand ways to deal with it, the result they faced would inevitably be a miserable defeat. The only one who probably wanted to fight Ryujiro, knowing his strength, was likely Sasuke. 
The names on the screen of the arena quickly flickered and finally settled. The first match. Hinata vs Misumi. Misumi. Looking at the ninja wearing round glasses and covering his face with a long mask, Ryujiro couldn't help but frown. If he remembered correctly, this person's body had been modified. In fact, he didn't have any special abilities, but every part of his body could soften and stretch freely. As long as one knew this information, defeating Misumi would be a piece of cake. Ryujiro informed Hinata of this information, and Hinata nodded, indicating that she would be careful. With the entrance of the two, all examinees left the arena. Naruto, lying on the railing, looked at Hinata unexpectedly and said, it's not Ryujiro who's the first one to go. But since it's Hinata, this battle should end quickly. Kakashi looked puzzled at Naruto. Naruto, it seems you know Hinata's strength well. Kakashi Sensei, I am friends with Ryujiro and Hinata, after all. Back in the Ninja Academy, I trained with them. Hinata defeated a Chunin in the early graduation exam. Defeated a Chunin? Kakashi became interested upon hearing this. According to Sakura, after Ryujiro arrived and directly kicked Orochimaru away, no one knew what happened next. But after visiting the Forest of Death, Kakashi understood that there must have been a fight between Ryujiro and Orochimaru. Otherwise, the trees in the forest wouldn't have been uprooted, and the shocking sword marks on the ground could only have been left by Ryujiro. Misumi's cold gaze locked onto Hinata. Little girl, I won't show mercy just because you're a girl. You can still forfeit now. Although Misumi's surface identity was a genin of Konoha, his actual identity was a spy arranged by Orochimaru among the Sound Village ninjas in Konoha. So, he wouldn't show mercy to Konoha ninjas either. Naturally, Hinata wouldn't forfeit. Moreover, Ryujiro had already informed Hinata of Misumi's abilities. As long as she was careful, Misumi was not a formidable opponent at all. Then, let the match begin. Gekko announced. Misumi swooped down like a meteor, and as long as this girl fought him with taijutsu, the battle would be over in an instant. Hinata, who knew the information, naturally wouldn't engage in taijutsu with Misumi. She took a stance and gathered chakra in her hands. 8 trigrams, air palm. An invisible shockwave burst out, and everyone present didn't understand what had happened. They only saw Misumi flying backward rapidly and crashing heavily into the wall, causing a loud rumble. Gekko stepped forward to confirm that Misumi had fainted and announced, the winner. Hinata Hyuga. There was a buzz among the examinees, as the result was unexpected to them. Because in their eyes, Hinata seemed soft and weak, not like a strong opponent at all. But unexpectedly, she disintegrated the battle in an instant. They didn't understand what had happened. The gazes of the remaining examinees towards Hinata became more solemn. Regarding Hinata's clean ending of the match, Hayashi, who was watching the exam in secret, was also very satisfied. Ryujiro indeed entrusted Hinata to you. It was the best decision I've ever made. The upper ninjas of the Hyuga clan who knew about Hinata's usage of the 8 trigrams air palm naturally understood it. However, what surprised them was that Hinata, at such a young age, could already use the 8 trigrams air palm. There were some unexpected things. The unconscious Masumi was quickly taken away by the medical team. These people's lives or deaths were not important at all. In Orochimaru's eyes, these people were just pawns. In the next match, Sasuke fought against Yoroi Akato. Just like in the original, although Sasuke's current strength was much stronger than in the original, he still suffered because he didn't understand Yoroi's abilities. But in the end, Sasuke still won a hard-fought victory against Yoroi. Although he won, Sasuke didn't clench his fist. Instead, he felt even more that the gap between him and Ryujiro was too big. Against such trash, he almost lost this match. Power. He needed more power. He wanted to surpass everyone here. Because of the evil thoughts in Sasuke's heart, the cursed seal on his neck suddenly activated before he left the field. Sasuke's face twisted, and he suddenly collapsed to the ground, which puzzled all the examinees present. Kakashi quickly took Sasuke off the field. Orochimaru has also left. In Ryujiro's observation, Orochimaru had actually been in the arena all along, but with Sasuke's disappearance, Orochimaru's aura also disappeared. After several matches. Gekko announced again. Next match, Ryujiro vs Tosu. Oh. Finally, Ryujiro is up. Naruto jumped up excitedly. The eyes of the ninjas on the field were all focused on Ryujiro. His appearance was like a dazzling star, attracting everyone's attention. That kid, the battle will end in an instant. Yes, after all, this Chunin exam is just child's play for him. Hearing the conversation of the upper ninjas, even Gara couldn't help but reassess Ryujiro. To receive such evaluations from the upper ninjas, how far had his strength reached? That's good. If his strength was too weak, this Chunin exam would be too boring. Tosu looked solemnly at Ryujiro. The kid who was valued so highly by these ninjas must have something special. As long as he was careful and seized the opportunity, there might still be a chance to win. Let the match begin. Swish. As soon as the words fell, Ryujiro's figure disappeared from everyone's sight. When they looked again, Ryujiro was already behind Tosu. Ryujiro put away his blade, expressionless, and slowly left the field. Pfft. Blood gushed from Tosu's waist, making all the examinees' faces turn pale. Medical team. 
Medical team. Gecko hastily shouted. At the same time, his gaze turned to Ryujiro's back, full of shock. Such swordsmanship. That kid is even scarier than Sakumo-san. I announce, Ryujiro wins this match. From start to finish, not even 10 seconds had passed. Saying that the battle was resolved in an instant wouldn't be an exaggeration. After Gecko announced Ryujiro's victory, the entire hall fell silent for several seconds. Everyone looked at Ryujiro walking up, their eyes filled with horror. Their throats were dry, unable to utter a sound. Another, monster. Temari looked at Ryujiro unwillingly, fearfully saying, that annoying guy is actually so terrifying. That kind of swordsmanship is not something a genin possesses. Damn it, when did Kanoha produce another genius in swordsmanship? Temari clenched her fists. When she drew the lots, she thought she could teach her opponent a lesson if it was Ryujiro. But now, witnessing Ryujiro's strength, Temari felt somewhat fortunate. If her opponent had truly been Ryujiro himself, could she really have dealt with that terrifying swordsmanship? Indeed, Kanoha was truly the cradle of geniuses. The young girl by that man's side wasn't a simple character either. Ten Ten and Lee were already shocked beyond words. Ryujiro's strength was just too terrifying. No wonder Gai-sensei had just told them the battle would end in an instant. It was all true. Many elite jonins looked at Ryujiro, inevitably recalling the white fang of Kanoha. Thinking back, the death of Sakumo Hataki still saddened many. Indeed, Ryujiro's strength is still as terrifying as ever. Naruto couldn't help but recall the devilish training sessions he had with Ryujiro. Remembering them now sent chills down his spine. And Naruto knew the best. This wasn't even all of Ryujiro's strength. Naruto had witnessed with his own eyes mountains being sliced apart by Ryujiro's blade. Once that terrifying slash was unleashed, the following exams would be impossible to continue. The next few matches went as Ryujiro predicted. By the time it was Rock Lee and Gara's turn, Ryujiro's lazy demeanor finally became somewhat serious. This was considered one of the most classic battles in the early stages of the Chinin exams. While Lee couldn't be considered a genius himself, his effort and sweat outweighed others several times over, if not tens of times over. It was precisely because of this that Lee's strength in Taijutsu was not inferior to that of a jonin. Of course, when Ryujiro referred to jonin, he meant the general jonin in the village. Lee still had a long way to go compared to elite jonin like Kakashi. Lee leaped down from the platform. Although Ryujiro warned me to be cautious of your bizarre abilities, since you're my opponent, I'll go all out. Lee always had his smile on his face, no matter when. TCH, that kid doesn't even know what kind of monster he's facing. Kankuro had a disdainful look. In his mind, even if it was Ryujiro, he might not necessarily be Gara's match. However, unlike Kankuro, what Temari was more concerned about was what Ryujiro and Lee had said to each other before entering the arena. It's really worrying. That Kanoha ninja seems to understand Gara quite well. Maybe he's just bluffing. He is just a Kanoha ninja. Even if he understands Gara's power, does he understand Gara's terror like I do? Kankuro didn't care much about what Ryujiro and Lee had said. In his opinion, the outcome was already decided. After hearing Kankuro's words, Temari thought it made sense, so she stopped thinking about it and focused on watching the match seriously. Hey hey hey! Is this for real? Kankuro's expression changed instantly. Gara's sand defense is starting to fall behind. How could that kid have such strength? The examinees on the field were all shocked, watching the afterimages. Even their eyes couldn't keep up with Lee's speed. This kid's strength is unexpectedly formidable. What kind of monsters were coming out of this tune in exams? So that's it. Even if Lee unties the restraints, it only makes Gara feel slightly troubled. Ryujiro, you're right. That kid with the gourd is also a monster. A hint of seriousness flashed in Mike Guy's eyes. He had underestimated Gara's strength. But why did Ryujiro understand a ninja from Sunagakure so well? Did Ryujiro have some information about Sunagakure? It's intriguing. As a jonin in the village, Guy naturally had to consider many things. Ryujiro's eyes kept moving in various directions along with Lee's position. Indeed, very fast. If it weren't for observation hockey, the eyes wouldn't be able to keep up with the speed. Just trailing behind. Perhaps Lee had no talent in ninjutsu, but in taijutsu, Lee was undoubtedly a genius. With a loud bang, a huge roar attracted everyone's attention, and the arena suddenly sank with cracks spreading in all directions. Lee was indeed a genius, but compared to a monster like Gara, the gap in levels was something that couldn't be bridged in an instant. Hey, Gara seems to be losing control. Kankuro looked at Gara's ferocious and bloodthirsty expression with fear, his forehead suddenly sweating. The sand armor has fallen off. How could that boy break through Gara's sand armor? But Gara. Temari bit her lip, her face unusually serious. Lee was now powerless, as he had used most of his stamina. But Gara, who was unstable, didn't intend to let Lee off. The surging killing intent emanating from Gara's body was already overwhelming. The Eight Gates. Ryujiro had long known the outcome of this match. He would stop this match, but he didn't intend to stop Lee from opening the eight gates. Lee had his own unique beliefs, and his belief was his own characteristic. The eight inner gates, release formation. The fourth gate, open. In the instant Lee burst out with power, even the ground couldn't withstand the terrifying force. 
In an instant, the earth collapsed, and the tremendous wind pressure made many people scream. Gara-san defense speed couldn't keep up with Lee anymore. That kid has mastered such terrifying taijutsu. Kanoha is truly formidable. Temari became increasingly wary of Kanoha's depth. A sword genius, a taijutsu genius. Were all the geniuses in the entire ninja world from Kanoha? So it ends like this. The fifth gate, open. With a loud bang, Gara crashed into the ground like a comet, just when everyone thought Lee had won. When the dust settled, although Gara looked somewhat disheveled, he hadn't suffered any substantial injuries. He's using the gourd made of sand as protection. Kakashi said with a serious expression. At this point, Lee had no more strength left. His muscles were torn, his legs broken. No one knew how much pain Lee was enduring at this moment. Kill that kid. Kill that kid. Another voice of Gara echoed in Gara's mind incessantly. Gara's gaze grew colder, controlling the sand to continue persecuting Lee. And just as the situation was about to reach a critical point, a figure appeared in the arena, and Gara San was instantly cut off by a sword aura. It's Ryujiro? Ino couldn't help but exclaim as she looked at the figure. Lee, it's over. You can't continue fighting anymore. If your injuries continue like this, if this battle continues, you might not even be able to continue living as a ninja. Lee didn't want to give up, but what Ryujiro said made sense. He was already exhausted. Lee, you have done well enough. This failure is only because your opponent is Gara. Ryujiro came to Lee's side and comforted him. Ah, that annoying guy. I'm going to kill all of you. Because of Ryujiro's appearance, Gara couldn't be suppressed anymore. The killing intent emanating from him made all the examinees present feel suffocated. Gara, He has gone berserk. Gai-sensei. Keep going. Ryujiro immediately threw Lee up. Lee fell into Gai's arms, still looking bewildered. Ryujiro, I'm injured. Hey. The match is already over. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough blood. Gara's true face had completely shed its disguise. At this moment, his facial expression was fiercely savage, and his eyes, filled with hostility, were bloodshot. Kakashi looked horrified, sensing such immense killing intent. What has this child been through? How many people has he killed? The match for the genin of Sunagakure village has ended. Gekko, using body flicker, suddenly appeared next to Gara. But the next moment, his expression turned extremely horrified. Get out of the way. Sand shuriken. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The sand around Gara turned into shuriken and flew towards Gekko. Ding, ding, ding. Gekko waved his sword, dispersing the large area of sand shuriken. This child? Gekko's expression froze instantly. This is no joke. This level of killing intent, this kid really wants to kill everyone present. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Anyone who obstructs me must die. At this moment, Gara was nearing madness. Sabaku Q. Yellow sand emerged from under Ryujiro and Gekko's feet, as if giant hands were trying to grasp their calves. Gekko, as a special jonin, instantly disappeared from his original position when he sensed something was wrong. As for Ryujiro, he had already known what Gara intended to do with his observation hockey and swiftly moved away from his original position. Sonigakure jonin, you better provide an explanation. Asuma frowned at Baki, the ominous chakra he emitted was definitely not something a child should possess. Baki's expression was also grim. Why did Gara lose control at this time? The ninjas of Kanoha didn't know that Gara was a Jinchuriki. If Kanoha found out that he, a Jinchuriki, participated in the Chunin exams while hiding his identity, Sonigakure would not be able to bear the consequences. It might even lead to a war. It's not acceptable to lose control at this time, it will cause trouble. So, you better take a nap for a while. Armament Haki. Black Blade. Clang, Ryujiro deliberately switched to the back of his blade. If the Jinchuriki died here, it would cause big trouble. He wasn't foolish enough to let it happen. One Sword Style. Flash. Whoosh, the high-speed movement rubbed against the air, producing a sharp sound similar to breaking the sound barrier. Swish, the speed of the sword was so fast that even everyone couldn't understand what had happened. Accompanied by a huge impact on the ground, a straight outline appeared directly. The extreme sharpness of the sword made everyone feel like their exposed skin was being pricked by needles. A huge wave of air formed another wave, and the examinees who didn't understand what was happening screamed sharply again. When the dust settled, Ryujiro had already sheathed his sword, and at this moment, the sand armor of Gara was shedding layer by layer from him. Gara made a hoarse sound, his eyes trembling violently. Thud, in front of everyone's eyes, Gara fell forward to the ground. Ryujiro looked at Gara, his eyes flashing with a strange light. He had used armament hockey on his sword, due to which his sword sliced through Gara's sand as if he was cutting a paper, this was also the reason why the sand armor fell off instantly. Sasuke looked at Ryujiro in horror. His fear of Ryujiro had risen to another level. Damn it. Why is the gap between him and me so huge? Even with the Sharingan, I can't keep up with his speed. Right now, I have no power to find Itachi and kill him. Sasuke was very angry, but felt helpless. At this point, Sasuke wasn't very powerful. Only in the later stage did Sasuke and Naruto open the road to their cheat mode. At this point, there was indeed a considerable gap between them and Ryujiro. 
Such swordsmanship? A hint of shock flashed in Gekko's eyes. He seemed to see his former leader, Sukumo Hataki, in Ryujiro. To possess such terrifying swordsmanship at such a young age. It's truly terrifying. Medical team. Medical team. Hurry up and come save him. Although Ryujiro used the back of his blade, due to the use of armament hockey, Gara still suffered significant injuries. And the remaining matches couldn't continue for now. The arena had been destroyed and couldn't host normal matches anymore. However, Ryujiro felt that there was no need to continue this Chunin exam. Hokage-sama, if I were to demonstrate my full strength, can I be excused from continuing the Chunin exams? Even Hiruzen on the platform was stunned. What does Ryujiro want to do? He knew that this Chunin exam was just a joke for Ryujiro. With Ryujiro's strength, it wouldn't be too much to promote him to a jonin. It seems that this child doesn't want to continue anymore. My consent alone is not enough. You have to make everyone present here recognize your strength. If the jonin of Sunagakir village has no objections, then I also agree that you don't need to continue participating in this match. What does this mean? The ninjas of Sunagakir village and several umbus understood what Ryujiro's words meant. Wasn't that just a display of his true strength? How was that possible? Let them acknowledge me? Ryujiro sneered. Well, let them open their eyes. Knowing Ryujiro's strength, Guy's expression suddenly changed. Ryujiro, are you serious? Kakashi, Kurinai, Asuma, and other Jonin's faces turned incredibly solemn as they kept their distance from Ryujiro and their own students. Hey, San Ninja. If you don't want to be affected, you better come over quickly. Even now, Baki and the San Shinobi were still puzzled. What exactly were the Konoha Shinobi up to? Ryujiro let out a heavy sigh, a hint of pride flashing across his face. Better not go too overboard. 70% of his strength should be enough. Swoosh, with Ryujiro's indiscernible draw of his sword, a dazzling dark red light flashed. Boom, a flying slash dozens of meters high erupted from the ground, its rolling sound akin to thunderous rumbling. The dark red strike engulfed everything, like a terrifying tsunami swallowing all upon the sea. Feeling the suffocating pressure, Sasuke, Sakura, Shikamaru, and the other genin couldn't help but hold their breath, their faces filled with horror. The dreadful sword aura crushed everything invisible on the ground. At that moment, the entire arena shook as if it could collapse at any moment, the sword aura tearing the earth apart with its terrifying force. Boom, a loud explosion echoed throughout the arena, causing everyone to shiver in fear. Thick dust covered the entire arena, and in the moment of the smoke's dispersal, everyone was left bewildered. When the dust settled, both the jonin and the examinees were stunned. In front of them, the smooth surface of the entire arena seemed as if it had been slashed open, revealing a huge gap. Most suffocatingly, the straight outline without end seemed to pierce into everyone's eyes like an abyss. At this moment, the entire venue fell silent. Even the air seemed to have solidified. Baki's expression was horrified to the extreme, almost losing control as he shouted, Are you kidding me? Is that your Konoha village's genin? Such power was definitely at the level of an S-rank ninjutsu, and there weren't many S-rank ninjutsu capable of such terrain influence. The only one capable of causing such an impact as demonstrated by Ryujiro was the Kage. Konoha village. It was terrifying beyond belief. Even after the Uchiha massacre, there was still such a terrifying sword genius hidden. Could such a strike truly be accomplished with swordsmanship? Was that black substance from before some special Kekiai Genkai? Why did the gods favor the Konoha village so much? Baki clenched his fists tightly, looking at Ryujiro with dread. Ten Ten and Lee mouths were so wide open that they could probably fit even an ostrich egg inside. Naruto and Hinata, who had seen Ryujiro cleave a mountain peak before, weren't too surprised. In fact, they had already prepared to face the storm earlier. Orochimaru, disguised as a jonin from the Sound Village, revealed an uncontrollable excitement in his dark serpent-like eyes. Orochimaru was like a child who had found a treasure trove, the fanaticism in his eyes could no longer be concealed. Ryujiro, this is your strength. In such a short time, you've actually grown to this extent. Indeed, you're special. It's a pity. If I had taken you away earlier, you would have been the best vessel. Orochimaru regretted a bit that he didn't capture Ryujiro when they first met. Now, the other had grown to this level, he was no longer someone he could easily deal with. Moreover, that terrifying strike. It seemed to require little effort to produce. Orochimaru couldn't help but suspect whether that strike was also a special Kekiai Genkai. A person possessing two Kekiai Genkai. This had never happened in the history of the ninja world. Is this his strength? Sasuke, with empty eyes, looked at the straight outline on the ground. At this moment, Sasuke felt as if there was no end in sight, as if he could never surpass Ryujiro in this lifetime. Even Hiruzen, holding his smoking pipe, was trembling. Although he already knew Ryujiro's strength, the impact of seeing it firsthand still stunned him. So, for this exam, the Jonin present? Do you think Ryujiro still needs to participate in the Chunin exam? Are you kidding me? With someone like him, the outcome of the Chunin exam was already obvious. Now, they didn't even have the courage to face Ryujiro directly. Baki remained silent for a long time. I have no objections, me neither. Nor do we. Good. 
Seeing that the Jonin had no objections, Hiruzen smiled with relief. Then, in the name of the third Hokage, I officially declare you as a special Jonin of the village. What? Directly promoted to Jonin. All the examinees widened their eyes, their expressions incredulous. Directly promoting to Jonin, such a thing had never happened in the history of Konoha. But if Ryujiro's strength was announced as that of a Chunin, it indeed wouldn't match his actual ability. The people present were only slightly shocked, and they didn't have much objection to Ryujiro becoming a special Jonin. Special Jonin, huh? A Kage level ninja? All the Jonins knew that after today, Ryujiro's name would resonate throughout the entire ninja world, becoming an undeniable force to reckon with, for the major villages. Jonin. Upon hearing those words, all the examinees shivered, but they were still worried about Ryujiro, who had already become a special Jonin. The gap between him and others was simply too vast. Looking at the crack that seemed like an abyss, countless people felt a chill. Among those present, perhaps no one was a match for Ryujiro. Even a Jonin might not be able to handle him. Participating in the Chunin exams with someone like him was simply despair. If Ryujiro was considered a Jenin, then the Jenin of Kanoha were terrifying indeed. The Chunin exams couldn't proceed any further. The expressions of those students were filled with horror, and now, even the planning between Orochimaru and Kabuto had to be reconsidered overnight. But Orochimaru didn't believe that Ryujiro would affect his plans. He knew Ryujiro had no sense of belonging to Kanoha. Ryujiro's thoughts were simple, he only wanted to protect the people he cared about. As for the lives of others, they were irrelevant to him. Moreover, Ryujiro felt it was time for Kanoha's windmill to spin again. The third Hokage was already old, there needed to be a stronger person to stabilize Kanoha's current state. A few days later, the news of Ryujiro being promoted to special jonin spread throughout Kanoha, and his name reached the ears of every house in Kanoha. A powerful ninja had emerged in the village, ensuring better security for everyone. Only with a stronger village could they live safely in Kanoha. Ryujiro, congratulations on becoming a jonin. In a small restaurant in Kanoha, Hinata, Tenten, Lee, Niji, Naruto, and others looked at the unique forehead protector on Ryujiro's head. Ah, Ryujiro is already a jonin. I have to work hard too. At least I have to surpass that arrogant Sasuke. Naruto clenched his fist, a hint of determination flashing in his eyes. He now saw Sasuke as his rival. His strength was no less than that of a chunin now, but his careless nature was his fatal flaw. A special jonin? Ryujiro, thank you for saving me back then, Rock Lee said gratefully. Ryujiro smiled faintly. Since we are all students of Gai-sensei, I certainly won't ignore you. Besides, if your opponent wasn't Gara, the fight might have ended quickly. Lee had surprised even Gai when he opened the fifth gate. In his eyes, Lee was a genius. Although he had no talent in ninjutsu, no one could surpass him in taijutsu. The eight inner gates were considered forbidden jutsus because of their extremely demanding training conditions and the inevitable deadlock once opened, leading to a terrifying forbidden jutsu where both the user and the enemy met their demise. Jonin. Ryujiro touched his forehead protector. Perhaps he was appointed as a special jonin because the village knew something. Hiruzen must have specially appointed him as a special jonin for a reason. But in a few days, Kanoha would face a small-scale war. During these past few days, some people in Kanoha felt a sense of foreboding, as if there were dark clouds hanging over the village. It seemed there was a terrible conspiracy brewing in the darkness. Three days later, the final rounds for the chunin exams officially began. Although Ryujiro had become a special jonin, he still arrived at the scene. The chunin exams were not going to end so easily. He had to keep Hinata safe. When Gara saw Ryujiro, his dormant second personality stirred again. Gara leaned against the railing, his eyes full of hostility fixed on Ryujiro. Gara. Temari cried out in fear. Baki's expression was also not very good. There was still some time before the plan began. If Gara lost control at this moment, even he didn't know how the plan would change. That brat? A fierce killing intent flashed in Baki's eyes. Such a young Kage level ninja like him, if he's allowed to continue growing, he would be a nightmare for everyone. This time, he would destroy the cradle of this genius in Kanoha? Sensing Baki's gaze, a faint smirk appeared on Ryujiro's lips. If you want to make a move against me, let's see if your sand village has the guts. Orochimaru. Has he disguised himself as the Kazakage? It seemed the plan was to proceed during the final exam, just like in the original story. The first match was Naruto Yuzubaki vs Niji Hyuga. Naruto, I won't hold back. Hee <laughs> hee, that's just perfect. As long as I defeat someone like you, the village would acknowledge me. Acknowledgement, huh? I want to gain Ryujiro's acknowledgement too. To protect Ryujiro and Lady Hinata, I must become stronger. Match. Start. Naruto crossed his hands into a cross. Multiple shadow clone jutsu. With a bang, dozens of clones appeared around Naruto, surrounding Niji. Shadow clones? Byakugan. Activate. Veins bulged on Niji's forehead as he activated his Byakugan, locking onto Naruto's real body instantly. Ha! Huh. Dozens of shadow clones charged toward Niji's position. Merely outnumbering wouldn't defeat Niji. Niji's chakra erupted instantly, followed by a rapid rotation like a top, turning his chakra into a barrier. 
All the charging shadow clones turned into smoke and disappeared. Not enough. After testing, Naruto finally got serious. Shadow clone jutsu. The clone circled around Niji, seemingly trying to confuse his vision. But Naruto didn't know that the Byakugan could see through his real body. Trying to confuse Niji was just Naruto's wishful thinking. Locking onto Naruto's real body, Niji assumed a gentle fist stance, and a 8 trigrams formation faintly appeared under his feet. The moment Naruto stepped into the formation. 8 trigrams. 32 palms. 2 palms. 4 palms. 8 palms. 32 palms. Bang bang bang. Faced with Niji's rain-like barrage of 32 palms, the shadow clones instantly exploded into smoke. Niji took a step forward, flying out like an arrow. 8 trigrams. 64 palms. Niji's strikes landed on the flowing chakra points of Naruto's body one after another. After a set of 64 palms, Naruto's face changed drastically. Chakra. Unable to use it anymore. It seems Naruto has lost, said Ryujiro indifferently from above. The reason why Naruto in the original story could still unleash some of the Ninetales chakra was partly due to the stimulation from Niji. Without the Ninetales chakra, the Naruto below was undoubtedly going to lose. Bang! A powerful palm struck Naruto's abdomen, sending him flying and tumbling on the ground. Thud thud thud. Niji didn't give Naruto any chance to catch his breath, swiftly running over. 8 trigrams air palm. Naruto, who hadn't yet gotten up, was sent flying again. After rolling several times, Naruto struggled to get up. But at this moment, Niji held a kunai over Naruto's head. Seeing this scene, Gekko announced, the winner of the first round is Niji Hyuga. The format of the final exam was different from before. It wasn't about winners passing the exam, it was about judging whether they could become Chunin based on their performance in battle. If this were on the battlefield, Naruto would undoubtedly die if Niji's kunai fell. Eh. Why is it like this? Naruto squatted down, holding his head and pulling his hair, seemingly unable to accept the result. Hinata's next opponent was a character who never appeared in the original story. It seemed that someone from Kurinai's team had replaced Hinata. In the next match, Kawahiko will face Hinata Hyuga. This battle came as a surprise to Ryujiro. This unfamiliar character, Kawahiko, turned out to be a ninja extremely skilled in Genjutsu. Even he made a struggle to win. Skilled in Genjutsu. It seems Kurinai has taught her own Genjutsu to that girl, Ryujiro muttered quietly. The next match was between Kankuro and Aburame Shino, but Kankuro announced his forfeiture as soon as he stepped onto the stage. This elicited murmurs of disappointment from the audience, and even the villagers of Kanoha watching were discussing among themselves about the sand ninjas. The hidden sand ninjas in the audience were trembling with rage, if not for the plan, they would have wanted to kill those few individuals. As soon as Sasuke and Gara took the stage, the hidden sand ninjas in the crowd began to stir. It seemed that things were about to start, and several pairs of murderous eyes were fixed on Ryajiro. These sand ninjas were targeting me. Ryujiro didn't need to think to know that this was a plan Baki had devised against him. Orochimaru's target was only Sasuke. Although Orochimaru was interested in Ryujiro as a vessel, he wasn't foolish enough to that extent. Ryajiro's power was no longer something Orochimaru could control. Gara enveloped himself in the sand armor. I will definitely kill that guy. Gara's sand armor endured multiple attempts from Sasuke, whether it was with Kunai or Shuriken, without being breached. Not enough. Is this all you've got? Sasuke's inner rage roared madly as he recalled Ryujiro's slash that had become Sasuke's haunting nightmare. Since you're hiding in there, then try this. After forming seals, Sasuke's dazzling lightning burst forth like sparks, and the sharp cries of Chidori excited the audience. Isn't that Kakashi's move? Mike Guy exclaimed in surprise as he looked at the Chidori on Sasuke's hand. Kakashi nodded. Incredible, that kid can actually use Chidori. Is that why you train Sasuke? Kakashi. Sasuke charged fiercely, and with the cries of Chidori, Gara's absolute defense was shattered by Sasuke's Chidori. With Gara's scream, both Temari and Kankuro on the stage turned pale with horror. No way. Is Gara going to lose control again? Something unknown, like a hand, emerged from Gara's shell, and Sasuke leaped back in shock, staring at the thing before him like a hand, suddenly feeling a palpable sense of dread. What's happening? Blood? Why? Why is there blood on me? Damn it. Damn it. I'll kill you all. Gara's voice inside the shell sounded almost insane, and the murderous intent erupting from him was chilling. And just then, white feathers began to fall from the sky like snow. The audience suddenly felt dizzy, and soon they fell into unconsciousness one by one. The plan orchestrated by Orochimaru, the Kanoha Crush plan, officially began. These are Genjutsu, Niji, Hinata, and Ryujiro all dispelled the Genjutsu, while Gara's extreme instability had already gone beyond the control of the original plot. Kakashi jumped from the stage to take Sasuke to a safe place. What's happening to Gara? Sasuke looked at the changes happening to Gara with a sense of unease. Kakashi's face showed an unprecedented solemn expression. That ominous chakra? If it's really a tailed beast, then it's trouble. Tailed beast? Sasuke heard this unfamiliar term for the first time. 
Tailed beasts are giant life forms created from immense chakra. Their power is like that of war machines, and even Akage has to be cautious when facing a tailed beast. Because the power of tailed beasts is too strong, they're sealed inside Jinchuriki, and individuals like that are called Jinchuriki. Listening to Kakashi's explanation, Sasuke was somewhat puzzled. Kakashi's face became extremely grim. His previous concerns had indeed come true. That's right. Hokage-sama. When Kakashi came to his senses, four of the sound four had already activated the four violet flames formation. Damn it, are they faster than Umbu? If the Jinchuriki goes out of control, it would probably be as bad as the Nine Tails incident back then. The main problem now was the trouble with Gara. Neither Hinata nor Niji understood what was happening. What's going on, Ryujiro? The Sound and Sand Village have initiated a plan against Konoha. What? The Sound and Sand Village are targeting Konoha? Hinata and Niji couldn't help but gasp in shock. Did the Sand Village want to start a war? It was only at this moment that Hinata and Niji realized that the Hokage had been taken away by Orochimaru disguised as the Kazakage. Niji, you protect Hinata and take her back to the Hyuga clan. Things are going to get very troublesome here. Understood, Ryujiro? Niji's expression also became solemn. Ryujiro kun? Hinata couldn't help but look worriedly at Ryujiro. Ryujiro showed a reassuring smile. Don't worry, I'll come back safely. Hinata hesitated for a moment, then suddenly leaned forward and kissed Ryujiro on the cheek. Seeing this scene, Niji turned his head away, surprised. When did Lady Hinata become so bold? Blushing, Hinata lowered her head, unable to look at Ryujiro. Then, I'll wait for you to come back. Ryujiro was also stunned for a moment but quickly regained his composure and simply responded with an hum. Hinata-sama, let's go. With Hinata in tow, Niji left the arena. Ryujiro couldn't help but touch the spot on his cheek where Hinata had kissed him. This feels pretty good. At this moment, just after Niji and his group left, two figures soared into the air. They were disguised as ordinary civilians but were actually Sunagakyur ninjas. Their target was Ryujiro, and the Sunanin wielding kunai rushed towards him. The pleasant atmosphere never lasts long. Sunagakyur shinobi, you've picked the wrong opponent? Ryajiro's indifferent voice caused the Sunagakur ninja to stiffen, facing his plain and unadorned strikes. One by one, bloody heads rolled to the ground, filling the air with the scent of blood. In an instant, a torrential rain of blood poured down, and Ryujiro, tired of being stained with blood, immediately left his original position. The vivid red color splashed onto the audience seats, adding a vibrant hue. That kid is truly terrifying. Baki's wariness towards Ryujiro escalated once again upon seeing his emotionless gaze. Boom! Accompanied by a loud noise, Temari and Kankuro were swept away by Gara, crashing into the rock wall. Embedded in the rock, Kankuro and Temari felt their internal organs shaking, blood gushing from their mouths. Both of them looked on with horror at Gara's transformation into Shikaku's form. Shikaku's form referred to a significant change in the body while still maintaining a human form. Gara in this state was extremely unstable. Enraged by the change in Gara below, Hiruzen's eyes suddenly contracted. That's it. So, the ominous chakra came from a tailed beast. That kid is a Jinchuriki from Sunagakyur. Hiruzen's expression turned grim. It was evident that the Sand Village, by concealing the presence of a Jinchuriki from the Kanoha village, had been plotting with Orochimaru for a long time. Damn Sunagakyur. Previously, the Kanoha village had provided them with a large amount of funding and resources. And now, they turned their backs at such a crucial moment. Sunagakyur is truly ungrateful. Hee <laughs> hee, it seems, Hiruzen sensei, that the Jinchuriki seems quite unstable. If not stopped in time, there might be another disaster similar to the Ninetales attack. Orochimaru sneered coldly. Hiruzen shuddered. Orochimaru, don't you have any feelings for the village? Feelings for the village? How could a wanted rogue ninja like me have feelings for the village? Hiruzen sensei, it seems you're truly getting old. Even your mind is getting muddled? Kankuro. Temari. Damn it. They're injured so badly. It seems Gara is out of control. In that case, let him wreak havoc. His target is that kid. If Gara manages to kill him, it might hurt Konoha for a while. Baki's gaze darkened as he looked up at Ryujiro, who was smiling ambiguously. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill him. Shoo! Gara's figure suddenly disappeared, appearing in front of Ryujiro in an instant. His transformed right hand swept towards Ryujiro. Boom! A huge storm surged again, and the immense power seemed to destroy the audience stands above layer by layer. As the dust settled, Ryujiro wielded his sword to block Gara's attack. Gara became more excited, laughing maniacally. That's it. Only you are worthy of being my prey. Killing you will prove my strength? Ryujiro looked calmly at the ferocious Gara. If you want to kill me, you'll have to prove you're worthy of doing so. But the force just now was indeed heavy. This is the power of a Jinchuriki. Both speed and strength have been raised several levels. Boom boom. The confrontation between the two sides destroyed the surrounding buildings, and countless debris fell from above, shaking the entire arena. In the distance, Temari and Kankuro looked on with a mixture of fear and dread. That guy can actually fight with the rampaging Gara to this extent? What kind of monster is this Kanoha ninja? 
Kankuro's face was full of horror. Initially, he had looked down on Ryujiro, thinking that Ryujiro was doomed to die once targeted by Gara. But after witnessing Ryujiro's strike just now, Kankuro found his previous arrogance laughable. He didn't even have the power to mock Ryujiro's strength. The battle had now reached a fever pitch. Gara relentlessly pursued Ryujiro, revealing a fierce grin. Is this all you can do? Your strength definitely doesn't end here. Are you looking down on me? I'll kill you. Killing someone stronger than me will make my value shine even more. Ryujiro used body flicker jutsu to escape. He couldn't help but think that Gara was truly a madman. He did have the ability to kill Gara instantly, but if he did so, other ninjas would definitely send reinforcements to support the third Hokage. In Ryujiro's mind, perhaps Hiruzen's death would be beneficial for Konoha's development. Kakashi, who was fighting with the Sunagakure ninjas in the distance, glanced at the battle between Ryujiro and Gara. As expected of a Jinchuriki, even Ryujiro seems to have some difficulty handling him. After all, that's the power of a tailed beast, which no longer belongs to the realm of humans. We must stop him quickly, or else the casualties in the village will increase. After kicking away a Saunin, Guy said solemnly. Yes, that three-headed snake monster and the one-tailed Jinchuriki were the most troublesome. Although the third Hokage was old, it wasn't easy for Orochimaru, a rogue ninja, to deal with him. Kakashi glanced at Hiruzen's position and suddenly his eyes contracted, revealing a shocked expression. Hey hey hey! Are you kidding me? Those two people, aren't they? The first Hokage and the second Hokage. The first Hokage, Hashirama Senju, was born during the Warring States period, and his formidable wood-style ninjutsu helped bring peace to those turbulent times. He was not only the first Hokage but also the founder of Konoha. His immense power earned him the title of the God of Shinobi. Thanks to Hashirama's presence, during his time, none of the other four great villages dared to even think about challenging Konoha. After Hashirama's passing, the other four great villages united to wage war against Konoha. However, despite their efforts, the war ended in Konoha's victory. But why would the two deceased Hokages appear now? Could it be? Kakashi suddenly remembered a forbidden jutsu developed by the second Hokage, a jutsu capable of summoning the dead back to the world of the living. The impure world reincarnation. A forbidden jutsu that brings the deceased back to life. If it's the first and second Hokage, then the third Hokage is in danger. The third Hokage, who was no longer in his prime, struggled even against Orochimaru alone. Orochimaru, how dare you toy with the dead? Playing with it will lead to dire consequences? Hiruzen's face turned pale with anger as he glared at Orochimaru. Orochimaru coldly smirked, Sensei, you should worry about yourself first. Sand bullet. Gara waved his hand, and a barrage of sand bullets shot towards Ryujiro, dense enough to shred even rocks like sieves. Ding ding ding, Ryujiro remained unperturbed, effortlessly deflecting the sand bullets with his sword. The two former Hokages have been summoned, the third Hokage is in danger. Swish swish swish. The remaining sand ninja threw shurikens from different angles, sealing off Ryujiro's blind spots. A hint of impatience flashed across Ryujiro's face. A group of pests. Boom. A terrifying pressure erupted from Ryujiro's body, pressing down on the sand and sound ninja like a mountain. Even Gara trembled under the influence of Conqueror's Haki, looking at Ryujiro with fear. The sand and sound ninja, overwhelmed by the Conqueror's Haki, fell unconscious. Some of Kanoha's ninja also succumbed to the pressure and passed out. Ryujiro's mastery of Conqueror's Haki was not yet perfect. The Umbu members watched with horror as this scene unfolded. What was that aura just now? Ryujiro, a special jonin, that aura emanated from him. The Umbu barely withstood the power of Conqueror's Haki, but they were still significantly affected. With such an aura, you truly are the best? That brat Sasuke can't compare to you, nor can the Uchiha clan of Konoha? At this moment, Sasuke had already been taken to another location by Kakashi. If he heard Gara's words here, he would likely lose his composure and join the fight, which would be suicidal given his current strength. Ryujiro paid no attention to Gara's words. Instead, he focused on the three-headed snake, which was still advancing. It's still not dealt with. Explosive tags had no effect on the three-headed snake. It was precisely because of this snake that Kanoha's ninja appeared weak. Damn it, they're ignoring me. Half of Gara's body had already transformed into a tailed beast. The instability of Shikaku's chakra indicated that Gara would soon fully transform into a tailed beast. Ryujiro glanced at the struggling third Hokage. It's time. Clang. A completely different aura erupted from Ryujiro's body. The sharpness in his eyes alone immobilized his enemies. A piercing sword cry reverberated in everyone's ears, making them feel as if their eardrums would burst. Armament Haki. Black Blade. A dazzling reddish-black sword aura soared into the sky, devouring everything in its path like a tidal wave. That suffocating and desperate feeling enveloped even Gara's heart with fear. How could something like this defeat me? Block it. Once again, Gara was enveloped in his armor of sand, resembling a turtle retreating into its shell. The Sound and Sand Ninja, as well as Kanoha's Ninja, looked on with fear at the Colossal Sword Aura, frozen stiff. It can't be. Such a sword aura, is it really created by swordsmanship? 
even the former White Fang didn't possess such power, Ryujiro, he's truly terrifying. Yes, the ultimate victory in this invasion will belong to us, Konoha. Konoha's ninja were ignited with fighting spirit because of Ryujiro's sword aura. Those who had lost their morale regained their sharpness once again. Ah. A scream of despair sent chills down everyone's spines. Gara, once proud and arrogant, had his sand armor split in half by Ryujiro's sword aura. Blood. So much blood. No no no. This can't be real. Damn it. Damn it. All of you. Come back to me. I don't want to be alone anymore. Gara roared ferociously, his body covered in bumps. His body rapidly changed, emitting a terrifying chakra pressure that swept through the surroundings. With a loud bang, a huge cloud of smoke enveloped the sky above Konoha, and the appearance of a massive figure caused the entire village to shake, as if in an earthquake. The ninja entangled in the battle looked at the enormous monster before them, their faces filled with horror. Ha ha ha. Finally, I'm free. The gigantic creature, resembling a tanuki, let out a sharp laugh, its terrifying pressure suffocating. Ryujiro sighed heavily. Finally, you have come out. Shikaku. Finally, I got my complete form. Temari, clutching the wound on her abdomen, looked in horror at the transformed complete form of Ichibi Shikaku. Hey hey hey, how did that thing end up here? This ominous chakra. It's one-tailed beast from Sunagegir. Those damn sand ninjas actually released a Jinchuriki into the village. Do they really want to start a war? The Konoha ninjas were both shocked and angry. Faced with such a colossal creature resembling a mountain, a hint of fear appeared on their faces. Of course, it wasn't just their situation that exceeded the expectations of the sand and sound shinobi. Has the Jinchuriki lost control? This is trouble. Baki-sama, what should we do? Baki looked solemnly at the colossal Shikaku not far away. Gara's will had been completely taken over by Shikaku. To risk awakening Gara under such circumstances, Baki didn't want to take such a dangerous risk. Inform the sand and sound shinobi in the nearby area to evacuate the area of the tailed beast, now is not the time to fool around. Once the tailed beast starts wreaking havoc in Kanoha, even their Sunagakir wouldn't be able to bear the consequences. Their initial goal was just to incapacitate Kanoha for a while, to stifle the young talents of Kanoha, but now things had escalated beyond control. The immense power of the tailed beasts could annihilate nations. He he he, Gara's grudge is because of you. Since this kid let me out, I'll do him a favor and kill you. Shikaku looked down at Ryujiro, who seemed as small as an ant. If you want to kill me, then give it a try. Shikaku's enormous palm descended, like a small mountain falling from the sky, covering an area for miles around, casting a huge shadow over Ryujiro. Ryujiro, who had always been nonchalant, finally showed a hint of seriousness on his face. Swinging the sword in his hand, a spiral slash akin to a drill swept out. Bang, the sound of Shikaku's hand exploding filled the air with dust and debris, like a sandstorm sweeping through. Ryujiro leaped to a spot where he could avoid the dust, covering his nose and mouth with his sleeve. Cough cough cough, what's happening? The Konoha and Sunagakir ninjas who were fighting in the distance kept coughing after inhaling the dust. The dust had obscured their vision, making it impossible to continue the fight. At this moment, a dark shadow swiftly moved towards Ryujiro's position. The sharp coldness emanating from it carried a fierce killing intent. Sharp kunai hovered in the air and landed heavily on Ryujiro's neck. Gotcha. Baki's face lit up with joy. Konoha's prodigy was about to die by my hand. Ding, the crisp sound of metal clashing made Baki's face turn pale. Kunai. It couldn't pierce through. He suddenly noticed that Ryujiro's neck was covered by some black substance, as hard as steel. Kekiai Genkai? Baki croaked hoarsely, his face stiff as he spoke a few words. A blade of light covered his field of vision, and Baki's body fell from a height, staring at Ryujiro unwillingly. Feeling his life slipping away, Baki struggled desperately in midair, forming hand seals. Wind style, wind blade jutsu a series of vacuum blades spewed out from Baki's mouth, but they didn't inflict any harm on Ryujiro. Useless. Baki, who was cut in half at the waist, fell to the ground. Blood dyed the hill red, and Baki's eyes lost their color. A jonin of Sunagakir died at the hands of Ryujiro. When the dust settled, the Sunagakir shinobi looked at Baki's bisected corpse, each showing an expression of immense fear. How could this happen? Baki-sama. This can't be true. Baki-sama actually died at the hands of a brat. Ah, ah, ah. Avenge Baki-sama. Wind style, wind blade jutsu. Wind style, vacuum bullets. A series of wind style ninjutsu came towards Ryujiro. Ryujiro stood there, unchanged, took a deep breath, and struck with a simple slash. Flying slash instantly devoured those Sunagakir ninjas. Why bother coming here, just to die? Just as Ryujiro's words fell, he felt a sudden sense of danger. Shikaku, staring at Ryujiro, suddenly took a deep breath and fiercely slapped his own massive belly. Wind style. Vacuum blast. A large amount of chakra turned into a huge wind ball, spewing out from Shikaku's mouth. At the same time, the previously undispersed dust stirred up again. The terrifying hurricane covered the sky above Kanoha with a thick layer of dust. The roaring gale mercilessly battered Kanoha village. One building after another couldn't withstand this terrible disaster and collapsed. 
The terrifying wind pressure, like a mountain, pressed down on everyone. The ninjas of Kanoha and Suna were blown away by this terrifying hurricane. The vacuum blast was imminent. Ryujiro grasped the sword in his hand, his eyes flashing with a sharp edge. He bent his legs, and the terrifying power erupted instantly. The stairs under his feet suddenly exploded, revealing a huge pit. Ryujiro flew towards Shikaku like a comet. One sword style. Dark slash. Clang, the sharp sound of the blade unsheathing seemed to echo throughout the entire ninja world at this moment. The vacuum blast instantly dissipated, and there was no terrifying slash flying out. But at this moment, the whole of Konoha was incredibly quiet, as if time had stopped at this moment. The gaze of everyone seemed to be marked with a terrifying sword scar, as if the world had been split in two. The colossal body of Shikaku, like a mountain, was instantly split in two, tilting to the right and slowly falling from the sky. Kid, what's your name? Shikaku's consciousness was gradually fading. Ryujiro, just a simple name echoed in everyone's ears. A terrifying kid, Shikaku's last words came out involuntarily, and with a bang, he disappeared into a cloud of smoke. At the same time, a small figure appeared on the ground. Gara had fallen into a deep coma. At this moment, the clouds floating above the sky also showed the image of being split in two by some kind of weapon. Has the sky been cut open? The tailed beast, has been defeated. All the ninjas present stared blankly at the clouds that were split in two, and such a terrifying scene made their eyes bulge just by looking at it. The tailed beast. The tailed beast has been defeated. Konoha. We have another astonishing talent. Everyone, now is the time for us to strike back. Guy, that kid is truly astonishing. Yeah, Ryujiro actually defeated a tailed beast. After today, Ryujiro's name will probably echo throughout the entire shinobi world. Kakashi and Mike Guy both looked at the diminutive figure of Ryujiro in shock. A 14-year-old child possessing such terrifying power was simply surreal. And Mike Guy knew very well that Ryujiro's strength now was even more terrifying than a few years ago. It's worth noting that Ryujiro had also learned the Eight Gates. To think that he possessed the power to defeat a tailed beast even without using the Eight Gates. Just how powerful had Ryujiro become? Has he surpassed the current third Hokage? At this moment, Hiruzen and Orochimaru, who were battling within the Four Purple Flames formation, also paused. Orochimaru's eyes revealed an uncontrollable excitement. Saburashii. What terrifying swordsmanship. Ryujiro, you're amazing. Ah, I really want. I really want to have you. Orochimaru's emotions had reached their peak. His gaze towards Ryujiro seemed as if he wanted to possess Ryujiro entirely. That child has truly grown to this extent. Hiruzen showed a relieved smile. But this smile didn't last long as he was punched away by Hashirama, the first Hokage. He struggled to get up. Hiruzen's physical strength was nearing its limit, and he was facing not only Hashirama but also Tobarama. Although these two were not at their peak strength, their combined efforts were enough to render Hiruzen unable to fight back. It seems I can only use that move, sealing Jutsu Reaper Death Seal. A strange chakra emerged from behind Hiruzen, and a fierce spirit holding a rosary appeared behind him. What is this feeling? Orochimaru shuddered all over. At the moment when the spirit appeared, a chill and a sense of fear from the soul inexplicably surged on his spine. That seal. What exactly was it? The three-headed snake continued to rampage through Konoha, destroying many buildings after crashing through the city walls. As a result, the battlefield was divided due to the immense body of the three-headed snake. No matter what methods the Konoha ninjas used, they couldn't stop the advance of the three-headed snake. Fire release, water release, shurikens, none of these methods could cause any harm to the three-headed snake. Under Ryujiro's watchful eyes, one of the Konoha Chunin was forcibly swallowed by the three-headed snake. This far should come to an end completely. Ryujiro vanished from his original position using body flicker jutsu. Konoha's ninjas tried their best to stop the three-headed snake's advance, but none of their methods were effective. During this time, they also had to guard against sneak attacks from the sand and sound ninja around them. Swish! Everyone felt something flying past them. A dazzling blade aura shot up, and Ryujiro, like a dazzling meteor, aimed directly at the three heads of the three-headed snake. Boom! A rain of blood fell instantly. The three menacing heads of the three-headed snake fell to the ground from a height, causing another wave of shock. Now the air was filled with the smell of blood. The Konoha Chunin who had been trying to stop the three-headed snake's advance before didn't understand what had happened before they saw Ryujiro appearing beside them. Ryujiro looked at the stunned Chunin indifferently and said calmly, The rest is up to you guys, it was time to enter the final battlefield. After saying that, Ryujiro's figure disappeared from the sight of the Konoha ninjas. When the Konoha ninjas came to their senses, they couldn't help but gulp down saliva and excitedly shout, Ryujiro-sama. It's Ryujiro-sama. Everyone. Ryujiro-sama has killed that beast for us. It's time for us to counterattack. There was no shortage of jonins among those who invaded Konoha this time. By now, Konoha was in ruins, with blood and corpses everywhere, and flames mercilessly devouring everything in the village. One chilling sword light after another fell mercilessly on the sand and sound ninja. Slash, 
That swift swordsmanship, the sound and sand ninja didn't even have time to react before being cut down. At this time, the umbu ninja on the rooftops arrived at the scene, their eyes dilating with fear in their eyes. What happened here? The sand and sound ninja, how did they all die? They were killed by a single blow from a sharp weapon. Such terrifying swordsmanship, there's only one person in all of Kanoha who can do this. The umbu ninja also thought of a young face, but it still made them take a deep breath. In the not too distant distance, another round of wailing and screams came. After the umbu arrived at the scene, they saw a figure covered in blood stains. His dark green eyes made even the umbu freeze in place. They all felt like prey being hunted by a hunter. How terrifying this young man was. Fortunately, Ryujiro was their Kanoha genius. If it were a genius from another village, such a terrifying individual would probably be a nightmare that Kanoha couldn't get rid of. You've worked hard, Ryujiro. We'll take over from here, Umbu Ninja said. Understood. Ryujiro responded with a swish and disappeared from Umbu's sight. Seeing Ryujiro using the body flicker jutsu to leave, the Umbu Ninja confirmed that there was no one left alive and continued to move towards the other areas of Kanoha invaded by the San Ninja. Before long, Ryujiro arrived at the entrance of the Hyuga clan compound. The reason Ryujiro left part of the battlefield was also because his progress could no longer continue. Character Template, Dracul Myhawk, Character Unlock Progress, 92%, after defeating the Tailed Beast, killing the Three-Headed Snake, and numerous Sand and Sound Ninja, his progress had reached 92%. However, no matter how many Sand Ninja he killed afterward, the progress bar did not change at all. Perhaps it was because the ninja who died at Ryujiro's hands were too weak to meet the conditions for increasing the progress. But as the progress increased, Ryujiro's understanding of swordsmanship once again improved. He left all matters of Kanoha to the umbu to handle. Ryujiro Kuen, you're back? Hinata hurried over, her steps resembling those of a porcelain doll. At this stage, Hinata seemed like a doll, evoking an instinctive desire to protect. Ryujiro, at the age of 14, stood at a height of 1.8 meters, while Hinata, a year younger, was barely 1.6 meters tall. Yet, the height difference between them could still be considered adorable. Ryujiro, how's the situation outside? Niji asked hesitantly. From the rooftop of the Hyuga residence, Niji had a clear view of how Ryujiro defeated the three-headed serpent. That terrifying swordsmanship was the most frightening he had ever seen. The war should be ending soon. Without the Jinchuriki and their tailed beasts, the San Ninja will soon be defeated. The Umbu have already begun handling the aftermath. Ryujiro said calmly. His body was stained with crimson blood, making him appear as though he were a figure drenched in blood. What's more, there were remnants of organs scattered across him. The soft tissues, when touched, induced a particularly nauseating feeling. Upon hearing Ryujiro's words, Niji breathed a sigh of relief. As long as the village was safe. However, the audacity of the San and Sound village to unite and plan an attack on Kanoha was astounding. With just the San and Sound villages, they wouldn't have had such confidence. There might be a mastermind behind this. Niji's deductions were not wrong. The Sound Village had only gained some notoriety in recent years, being a relatively ordinary ninja village. Compared to the ninja villages of the five great nations, the Sound Village seemed minuscule. Additionally, the Land of Wind, though part of the five great nations, had harsh environments and scarce resources. After the Third Great Ninja War, the Land of Wind had long been impoverished. Without sufficient confidence, the Land of Wind would never dare to wage war against Kanoha. Currently, even as Ryujiro cleaned the filth from his body, his name had become an indelible nightmare for the Sand and Sound Ninja. His terrifying strength, far beyond his age, and his devastating sword strikes comparable to S-rank ninjutsu were simply despair-inducing. Moreover, the one orchestrating everything for the Sand Village, Baki, was dead. After Gara transformed into a human, with the help of Shikaku's Chakra, Kankuro and Temari, along with Gara, managed to escape Kanoha. Of course, during this process, the Sand Ninja escorting them also lost their lives. If the Jinchuriki of the Sand Village were to fall into Kanoha's hands, it would be an irreparable loss for the entire Sand Village. As the war gradually came to a close, the outside clamor diminished significantly. Kanoha appeared devastated, with collapsed buildings everywhere. The city walls had a massive hole from the three-headed serpent's attack. The once-renowned village hidden in the leaves now seemed like a fading hero. Not long after the war, shocking news spread throughout Kanoha that left everyone in disbelief. The third Hokage. Had fallen. And at that moment, Jiraiya who had rushed back to the village, had an extremely dark face, his terrifying expression and eyes revealing incomparable rage. Umbu Ninja, stained with blood, suddenly appeared before Jiraiya, kneeling to report the latest casualties in Kanoha. Upon hearing of the third Hokage's demise, Jiraiya staggered back, his mind reeling. This heartbreaking news was something Jiraiya couldn't fathom. The old man. Had died. Jiraiya clenched his fists, his nails digging into his flesh, yet he felt no pain. His agony now transcended physical sensation. Orochimaru. You bastard. You really killed Sensei. Three days later, all ninjas attended the third Hokage's memorial service. The tragic news left everyone in disbelief. 
the third Hokage had always been portrayed as a kind old man, embracing all the ninja and villagers of Konoha. However, only Ryujiro knew that behind this facade of kindness, the third Hokage had done many unspeakable things, without which, the Uchiha clan might not have had the idea of a coup d'etat. Konoha had always distrusted the Uchiha, yet the Uchiha still belonged to Konoha. But the higher-ups of Konoha feared the terrifying power hidden within the Uchiha clan. If Fugaku Uchiha had decided to launch a coup, he was fully capable of starting another Ninetales incident. However, in the end, Fugaku chose another path, to die by the hand of his own son, Itachi Uchiha. Third Hokage. As Ryujiro looked at the third Hokage lying in the coffin, his eyes remained unaffected. He had the power to stop this tragedy entirely, but he chose not to. It was time for a more assertive leader to take the position of Hokage. Konoha, invaded, no longer bore its former prosperity. Many parts of Konoha needed reconstruction, and countless people had lost their husbands and children in this war. Many Konoha ninjas wished to avenge their loved ones with their own hands. But Konoha couldn't afford another upheaval. Though Konoha emerged victorious from this war, losing the third Hokage was an outcome no one could accept. After the memorial service, all the jonin were summoned, including Ryujiro, who was recently appointed as a special jonin. Only someone like Jiraiya, who had returned not long ago, could summon all the jonin. Ryujiro looked with interest at the man before him, hailed as a hero. The legendary Sanin, Jiraiya, was also a character loved by many in the original Naruto series. Though Jiraiya was pervy, it was part of his nature. For so many years, Jiraiya only had Tsunade in his heart. He was a faithful man. You must be Ryujiro? Just as they described, your sharpness is apparent at first glance. Lord Jiraiya, you're too kind. I've just put in a little more effort than others, it's not as exaggerated as you say, Ryujiro said with a faint smile. Such modesty, coupled with extraordinary strength, was admirable. This kid resembles you, Sakumo-san. Jiraiya looked at Ryujiro with relief. He was extremely shocked when he learned that the son Jinchuriki was defeated by a child. He thought that the news was so ridiculous, but when he saw the impact of Ryujiro slash, Jiraiya was so shocked by the scene in front of him that he couldn't speak. The abyss-like crack seemed to have formed a cliff canyon with a single blow. The impact of this slash undoubtedly reached the power of S-level ninjutsu, not even more. Being able to defeat the One-Tails Jinchuriki, showed Ryujiro power. Such a person belonged to Konoha village, this was really fortunate according to him. Jiraiya carefully observed the young fellow in front of him. His expression turned serious. Although Konoha has won this victory, the third Hokage has perished because of it. The position of Hokage cannot remain vacant for long. We must quickly select someone to take on the role of Hokage. Do any of you have any recommendations? The upper ninjas of Konoha looked at each other, pondering. Selecting the Hokage. To be honest, they hadn't thought about it yet. The most basic requirement to become a Hokage is to possess the strength of a shinobi. Without formidable strength, at least there must be prestige. Having both strength and prestige recognized by the villagers is what makes a qualified Hokage. Well, Jiraiya-sama, since you were a disciple of the third Hokage, perhaps you are the most suitable candidate for the position of Hokage, one of the council member proposed. The other's eyes lit up instantly. Yes. Jiraiya-sama is one of the legendary Sanin. He achieved glorious feats during all great ninja wars. All the higher-ups present believed that if Jiraiya were to take on the role of Hokage, he would undoubtedly be a qualified one. Even the villagers wouldn't have much objection. Jiraiya's expression changed drastically, and he hurriedly refused. The position of Hokage is not suitable for me. Besides, I still have missions that require me to go out and investigate at any time. I cannot take on the position of Hokage. Ah, Jiraiya-sama doesn't want to be Hokage? The others were surprised, but upon reflection, Jiraiya-sama seemed accustomed to freedom. Moreover, Jiraiya's pervy tendencies were well known. He frequented the women's bathhouse in Konoha. If he were to become Hokage and these things were exposed, the result would be a peeping Tom holding the position of Hokage. Just thinking about it made the higher-ups shudder. But if not Jiraiya-sama, who else could take on the position of Hokage? The ninjas all wore expressions of melancholy. If it weren't for the Ninetales incident, Konoha wouldn't be in this situation. If the fourth Hokage were still alive, the Sound and Sand villages wouldn't have dared to attack Konoha so brazenly. And in this silence, Danzo, leaning on his cane, entered the room. Naturally, the position of Hokage will be inherited by me. Jiraiya looked at Danzo with a grim expression. Danzo, you can forget about the position of Hokage. Danzo's cold gaze met Jiraiya's, and he said icily. Besides me, no one is more suitable for the position of Hokage. If not for Sarutobi, I would have been the most likely candidate to inherit the position of the third Hokage. He had coveted the position of Hokage for many years. Only by becoming the Hokage himself could Konoha possibly regain its former glory as the leading village in the shinobi world. He would make Konoha great again. Your methods are not suitable for the position of Hokage. Konoha will not have a good outcome under your leadership. Jiraiya. You are too insolent. Two massive chakra pressures surged around, bringing considerable pressure to the higher-ups present. I think Jiraiya is right. 
The position of Hokage is not suitable for you. Danzo. Asuma lit a cigarette and stepped forward. Asuma. Danzo glared at Asuma with a fierce look. Asuma was the son of the third Hokage. If Asuma objected to this Hokage position, it would be difficult for Danzo to take it. Even the position of the fifth Hokage might be taken by Asuma. Since you won't let me take the position of Hokage, then you should nominate someone suitable for the position. For a while, neither Asuma nor Jiraiya had anything to say. Jiraiya glanced at Asuma, hesitated for a moment, and said. Asuma, if you want take on the position of Hokage, no one in the village would object. After all, you are the son of the old man. Me as Hokage? Asuma was almost startled, almost dropping the cigarette from his mouth. Forget it, being Hokage is too troublesome. Jiraiya-sama, have you forgotten someone? Besides Orochimaru, isn't there another person who is also one of the legendary Sanin, just like you? Jiraiya clapped his hands excitedly. That's right. How could I forget about Tsunade? Danzo's face turned even darker as he firmly rejected, are you suggesting Tsunade to take on the position of 5th Hokage? That's impossible. Have you forgotten about the aftermath of the war that Tsunade experienced? A person who fears blood is not qualified to be Hokage. Tsunade, the last descendant of the Senju clan, and one of the legendary Sanin along with Jiraiya and Orochimaru, gained notoriety during the Third Great Ninja War. Who said being Hokage must involve bloodshed? Moreover, Tsunade has the blood of the Senju clan. It is only natural for her to take on the position of Hokage. Jiraiya confronted Danzo forcefully. Ryujiro, feeling somewhat fatigued, yawned. The argument between Danzo and Jiraiya was truly boring. If it weren't for his status, Ryujiro would have somewhat wanted to leave. After several disputes, Jiraiya and Danzo finally parted ways without resolution. Jiraiya proposed to bring Tsunade back to the village and nominate her for the position of Hokage. But with Tsunade's personality. Jiraiya could already feel a headache coming on just thinking about it. Even if Tsunade were willing to return to Kanoha, she might not necessarily take on the position of Hokage. For now, the priority was to bring Tsunade back. At this moment, only Ryujiro and Jiraiya remained in the room. Jiraiya looked at Ryujiro and asked, Ryujiro, did you teach Naruto the Raisin Gan? Yes. Jiraiya had recently returned to the village and was surprised when he found out that Naruto could perform the Raisin Gan. After all, the Raisin Gan was created by Minato. It was quite astonishing to him that someone besides himself and Minato could perform it. The Raisin Gan was developed by the fourth Hokage. How did you learn it? I developed it myself. Jiraiya-sama. Are you saying that the Raisin Gan was originally developed by the fourth Hokage? Ryujiro naturally pretended to know nothing. Jiraiya was now probing him. Although Jiraiya was different from Haruzen and had his own morals, he wouldn't hesitate to take action if anyone threatened Kanoha's interests. Moreover, Ryujiro had the strength to prevent this tragedy from happening. He needed to continue hiding his true strength for now. You developed it yourself? Jiraiya was somewhat surprised. Indeed, a genius. In both ninjutsu and kenjutsu, Ryujiro was more versatile than any genius he had ever seen. The principle of the Raisin Gan wasn't that difficult. As long as one understood its principles, learning the Raisin Gan wasn't difficult. So Jiraiya didn't doubt Ryujiro too much. This time, Kanoha's victory was largely due to Ryujiro. But Jiraiya could see the rebellious and sharp eyes of Ryujiro. He knew that the young man in front of him was definitely not that simple. I see. Ryujiro, are you interested in meeting someone with me? Who? Another Sanin? Hey! Pervy Sage. Why is Ryujiro with us? Weren't you supposed to take me alone? You're a big liar. Naruto looked displeased, as if he was not happy with Ryujiro beside him. Ryujiro put his hand on Naruto's head, then turned to him with a gentle smile. Naruto, do you have a problem with me? Looking at Ryujiro's friendly smile, Naruto couldn't help but shiver and quickly shook his head, saying. No, no. Ryujiro, I was just joking to lighten the mood. Terrifying. Ryujiro's smile. It's like he's going to devour someone. TCH? Boring. They were still within the borders of the Land of Fire. Although Jiraiya didn't know Tsunade's exact whereabouts, Tsunade definitely wouldn't leave the Land of Fire, and she usually frequented only a few places. After all, Tsunade was an old gambler. But even though she was such an old gambler who had been gambling since her youth, she had never won once. To say that this person had bad luck wasn't an overstatement, as she always lost. None of the three disciples of Haruzen were exemplary. One was a pervert, one was a gambler, and one was like a poisonous snake who liked powerful kids. Ryujiro felt that they shouldn't be called the legendary Sanin if that was the case. Following Jiraiya, Ryujiro arrived at a town in the Land of Fire. Since they were looking for Tsunade, the first thing to do was naturally to go to a gambling den. There were only a few places where Tsunade usually frequented, and although Tsunade had been losing, she had never been short of money. The reason was that no one dared to approach Tsunade to ask for repayment of high-interest loans. If anyone had ill intentions toward her, Tsunade could simply stomp her foot, and the ground would collapse into a pit. Who would dare to approach Tsunade for repayment? They had already visited several gambling dens but hadn't found Tsunade's whereabouts. Now there was only one gambling den left. 
If Tsunade wasn't found there, it would be difficult to find her. Meanwhile, in a certain casino, a figure stood out among the other patrons. Golden long hair, mature appearance, and a voluptuous figure that was impossible to ignore, especially the huge balloons on her chest, which made it hard to look away. But the gamblers in the casino only dared to sneak glances. After all, this golden-haired beauty was notorious for being difficult to provoke. It was said that several thugs tried to harass her and ended up partially disabled. Place your bets. Place your bets. Tsunade looked at the chips in her hand with a conflicted expression. She didn't have many chips left, and if she lost again, she would truly be broke. 5. It's been even all this time, so it must be odd this time. Beside Tsunade was a delicate beauty wearing a black kimono and holding a small piglet. At this moment, a look of despair appeared on Shizun's face. As long as you bet against Tsunade, you were guaranteed to win. Darn it. It's odd after all. Tsunade looked somewhat annoyed at the dice, having lost all her chips from morning till afternoon. Lady Tsunade, it's getting late. Let's go back, Shizun said helplessly. If it weren't for Tsunade, Shizun would never set foot in a gambling den in her lifetime. Aida. Tsunade was still somewhat reluctant, but she had run out of chips. All right, Shizun, let's go back. Shizun's despondent expression finally gave way to a faint smile. They could finally go back. Oh, Tsunade. So you were here? Hearing the familiar voice, Tsunade widened her eyes in disbelief, staring at the person in front of her. Jiraiya. How did you end up here? Lord Jiraiya. At this moment, Naruto's face turned red instantly, and he shyly turned his head away, as if he had just seen something he shouldn't have. Ryujiro squinted at Tsunade. Truly one of the legendary Sanin, indeed very impressive, cough cough. I mean, indeed very much embodies the spirit of the legendary Sanin. After chatting with Jiraiya and Tsunade for a while, they all went to a nearby tavern. When Tsunade and Shizun learned that the third Hokage had died protecting the village from Orochimaru's attack, they couldn't accept this fact. That bastard Orochimaru, he really dared to do it, Tsunade said darkly, feeling a lot of guilt towards the third Hokage. Regardless, the third Hokage was her teacher. She couldn't believe that she wasn't by his side when he was in danger. What's even more ridiculous is that the third Hokage died at the hands of Orochimaru, who was once his most promising disciple. Even Tsunade herself thought at the time that Orochimaru was likely to succeed the third Hokage as Hokage. But now everything has changed. Hey, Jiraiya, who are these two brats with you? Tsunade brushed away her dark thoughts and finally noticed the two kids beside Jiraiya. Oh, this one is Naruto, you could say he's half my disciple. What? Pervy Sage. How am I only half? Tsunade almost spewed out the tea she had just drunk when she heard Pervy Sage. Pervy Sage. It really suits Jiraiya's image. And this is Ryujiro, a recently promoted jonin, and a genius swordsman. Tsunade, his swordsmanship is even more terrifying than Sakumo-san. What? More terrifying than Sakumo's swordsmanship? Sakumo was truly a ninja of the highest caliber, and what Jiraiya meant was that this kid already possessed strength surpassing that of Sakumo at such a young age. Is that possible? Jiraiya, even if this kid is a genius, you shouldn't exaggerate like that. I've seen Sakumo's strength firsthand, so I know best. Tsunade felt that Jiraiya was exaggerating a bit. Although this kid looked quite mature for his age, Tsunade estimated that he couldn't be older than 16. But to have surpassed a jonin level ninja like Sakumo at such a young age? Even if this were spread, it would be regarded as a joke by others. Hey, Tsunade, I advise you not to underestimate Ryujiro. If it weren't for him, the calamity that Kanoha experienced this time would have been no different from the Nine Tails incident. Ryujiro single-handedly stopped a Jinchuriki, and even defeated a tailed beast Hedon. Tsunade suddenly stood up, looking at Ryujiro in disbelief, her finger trembling as she pointed at him. You're saying this kid defeated a tailed beast? How is that possible? Tailed beast Jinchurikis are the ultimate weapon of the major ninja villages, and the power of tailed beasts can be said to be devastating. Even the Kage would struggle against a tailed beast, except for the first Hokage of Konoha. Of course, the strength of each tailed beast, from one tail to nine tails, varies greatly. Except for the first Hokage of Kanoha, of course. Perhaps when the Sage of Six Paths distributed Chakra, he favored the Nine Tails a bit more. Otherwise, how could the Nine Tails and Naruto easily defeat the other seven tailed beasts when working together in the later stages? But even a one tail is not something that an ordinary jonin can handle, and only a Kage can deal with a fully transformed Jinchuriki. How old is this kid? Tsunade asked in shock. 14? Ha! Huh. Tsunade and Shizun both sucked in a breath of cold air. Jiraiya, are you sure you're not kidding me? A 14-year-old Kage? This isn't a genius, it's a monster. It's a freak. The key point is that Jiraiya just said that this kid's swordsmanship is on par with S-rank ninjutsu, and there's not even a trace of chakra in it, meaning that this sword strike is purely wielded by Ryujiro himself. With such terrifying swordsmanship, even White Fang of the Kanoha would probably hand over his title to Ryujiro if he were still alive. Not bad, kid. You'll definitely have a place as a future great shinobi of Kanoha. 
Tsunade slapped Ryujiro's shoulder with pride, completely unaware that he was one of the most powerful people who shook the ninja world. Some even suspected before that if Tsunade really became the fifth Hokage, she might mortgage Kanoha, after all, Tsunade's personality and her luck in the gambling den really made it possible. Ryujiro coldly brushed off Tsunade's hand and said indifferently. But I'm not interested in being a Hokage. I just want to be strong enough to protect the people around me. Not interested in being Hokage? This surprised Tsunade a bit. Wasn't the position of Hokage a lifelong dream for these young ninjas? But just wanting to protect the people around oneself. Tsunade's gaze dimmed at this point. Can being strong enough really protect the people around oneself? The tragedies of Dan and Nawaki. Perhaps if she had been strong enough, with the strength she has now, maybe Dan and Nawaki wouldn't have died. Kid, you do have a bit of a manly demeanor, but don't hang out with Jiraiya too much. I know Jiraiya's character best. This guy has had no luck with women since I've known him. If you don't want to stay single in the future, it's best to stay away from Jiraiya. Hey, Tsunade, are you making fun of me in front of the younger generation? Jiraiya glared at Tsunade angrily. Tsunade's tongue was still as venomous as ever after all these years. Hmm. No, there's been a bit of a change. Jiraiya's gaze couldn't help but focus on Tsunade's upper body. However, just as he stared for only a few seconds, a fist the size of a sandbag smashed into Jiraiya's face. Boom. A sound like a bursting balloon, an invisible shockwave resounded, and Jiraiya flew out like a comet. Pervy Sage. Damn it, what are you doing? Naruto looked at Tsunade angrily. Don't look at me like that, kid. I would have gouged out his eyes a long time ago if it were someone else. Besides, Jiraiya is fine. Tsunade shrugged indifferently. Jiraiya was smashed into the wall by Tsunade's punch, and the whole person leaned against the rubble. The people around dared not approach, thinking that Jiraiya was dead. Aida, Tsunade, you're still the same? Jiraiya got up, touched the spot where Tsunade had hit him. Tsunade's monstrous strength was still as terrifying as ever. Humph. Jiraiya, your annoying personality is still the same. Tsunade looked disdainful. Jiraiya rubbed his neck and chuckled. Boss, I'm sorry. The losses here are all on my account. After all, they smashed someone else's tavern. No matter what, they couldn't just walk away like that. Besides, Jiraiya knew that since Tsunade was willing to come out of the gambling den, she definitely had no money left. The tavern owner looked gratefully at Jiraiya. Such a good person. If he were to ask that woman for compensation, she would probably kill him. Tsunade put one foot on a stool, her imposing manner causing Ryujiro to widen his eyes slowly. Alright, Jiraiya, since you've come to find me, it's not just for catching up. Speak up if you have something to say. The small talk ends here. That's right. The purpose of coming to find Tsunade must not be forgotten. Jiraiya put away his smile, and said seriously to Tsunade, Tsunade. Will you become the fifth Hokage? Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Even Orochimaru couldn't react in time. Tsunade and Jiraiya also struggled to keep up with Ryujiro's speed. Why wasn't this kid playing by the rules? Why did he suddenly attack? Jiraiya and Tsunade couldn't just stand by. With a cold gleam in his eyes, Ryujiro pressed his sword against Orochimaru's neck, his expression calm. Even facing one of the Sanin, Orochimaru, Ryujiro remained unfazed. Orochimaru, I advise you not to move. My sword is faster than your petty tricks. Though Ryujiro's tone was calm, the domineering aura emanating from him made Orochimaru feel an icy chill instantly enveloping him. That aura again? This pressure wasn't from Chakra, it was an instinctual fear, and facing Ryujiro, Orochimaru couldn't help but feel he wasn't dealing with just a shinobi. Instead, he sensed a unique presence, akin to that of a king. Was Ryujiro aspiring to become a nation's ruler? Ryujiro Kuen, what do you mean by this? Orochimaru squinted at Ryujiro with a strange look in his eyes. Orochimaru, you should understand without me having to spell it out. The third Hokage died by your hand, and everyone wants revenge for him. Naturally, I am no exception. A terrifying killing intent erupted from Ryujiro, drowning everything like a tidal wave. Struggling to stand, Kabuto looked at Ryujiro in terror. Lord Orochimaru. Before he could finish, Ryujiro left a blur and appeared in front of Kabuto, looking at him expressionlessly. Though Kabuto's reaction was quick, his face momentarily froze, but his body's instincts prevented him from attacking Ryujiro. You have no say here. Weaklings should act like weaklings. With terrifying strength, Ryujiro's fist smashed into Kabuto's chest. The sound of bones breaking sent chills down everyone's spine. However, Jiraiya couldn't help but frown. Ryujiro's reaction was strange. While Orochimaru was indeed the killer of the third Hokage, and Kanoha Village's ninjas harbored resentment towards him, Jiraiya sensed only killing intent from Ryujiro, not hatred. Why did Ryujiro harbor such intense killing intent towards Orochimaru and Kabuto? Has Orochimaru done something to Ryujiro before? Jiraiya, that kid, that wild gaze, it's as if he's a wild beast. We can't let him come into contact with Danzo's root. If this kid falls into darkness, it will lead to unforeseen consequences for us. A grave expression crossed Tsunade's face. Such a gaze. If the higher-ups of the Kanoha village pressured Ryujiro, it would backfire, possibly leading to the emergence of another powerful rogue ninja. Kabuto is my subordinate. Please be gentle with him. Heh, even if he's your subordinate? He's just a pawn to you. Ryujiro mercilessly exposed Orochimaru's lies. A snake is a cold-blooded creature, and Orochimaru was no longer human. He was more like a venomous snake that devoured people without leaving bones. Heh, it seems you understand me well, Ryujiro. Orochimaru's face turned completely dark. Before Ryujiro, he didn't dare to act rashly. Moreover, with Jiraiya and Tsunade present, Orochimaru's strength was greatly reduced. His hands felt as if they were burning, as if engulfed in intense heat. Hey, Ryujiro, Orochimaru isn't that simple. Don't act on your own for now. However, though Jiraiya's voice reached Ryujiro's ears, he acted as if he hadn't heard. Both Ryujiro and Orochimaru suddenly disappeared from the sight of the three, with Orochimaru being kicked away by Ryujiro again, just like during the Chunin exams. But this time, Orochimaru had no power to block the kick. Is this kid always so reckless? Tsunade looked at Jiraiya. Jiraiya sighed. I don't quite understand him either. Let's catch up quickly. Orochimaru's not in his right mind, but if Ryujiro's not careful, he might fall victim to Orochimaru's strange jutsus. Tsunade nodded in agreement. Both glanced at their disciples. You two stay here. With that, Jiraiya and Tsunade disappeared in front of Naruto and Shizen's eyes. Naruto and Shizen looked at each other in confusion, then turned away, their eyes meeting, and the air fell silent as if several black dots appeared over their heads. So, we've been left behind like this? Bang! 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 As the smoke exploded, engulfing the surroundings, the ground shook violently, and a dangerous aura filled the air. A massive snake-like summon creature with purple markings appeared, its head adorned with three prominent horns resembling a dragon's. It loomed before Ryujiro like a small mountain peak. Orochimaru's summon, Manda. However, Orochimaru's summon had a specific condition, after each summoning, Manda required 100 living sacrifices. These sacrifices could be anyone, children, adults, or the elderly, and ultimately, they were all consumed by Manda, making it the epitome of an evil summon. TSK TSK, Orochimaru, you're shameless. Summoning me to deal with a mere child, Manda remarked. Hm? Your hand? No wonder, your power is restricted. It seems you've done something significant before. Manda was not pleased with Orochimaru's interference, but they were old acquaintances. Orochimaru's aura had weakened significantly since their last encounter. Manda, Ryujiro is not as simple as you think. One wrong move and even you might fall by his blade, Orochimaru warned solemnly. Oh? But just a little brat was making Orochimaru cautious? This wasn't quite the Orochimaru he knew. Was it because of his weakened state? Orochimaru, don't compare me to you. I am Manda. The strongest snake of the Ryuchi cave. Manda declared. Manda simply couldn't believe that a mere ant could kill him. 
its massive body pressed down on the surroundings, crushing trees under its colossal form. The terrifying aura it emitted sent nearby creatures fleeing. You have no chance to shine here, Manda. You'd better obediently return to the Ryuchi cave with your tail between your legs. Ryujiro's gaze remained ice cold as he faced the massive Manda. Despite its size, Ryujiro remained unfazed. Kid, what did you say? Manda erupted in anger, its aura resembling an erupting volcano, ready to burst at any moment. This stage isn't yours, Manda. You brat. Even if Orochimaru pleads for you, I'll still kill you. With Manda anger reaching its peak, its tremendous power surged like a tidal wave. The ground collapsed under its immense force, and friction in the air created a shockwave akin to thunder rolling. Its colossal tail swept towards Ryujiro, devastating the land. Manda power could easily demolish a small mountain. Humph, an arrogant kid, prepare to be crushed. Unperturbed, Ryujiro calmly assumed a stance with his sword drawn. The chilling glint in his eyes caused the surrounding temperature to plummet. No matter how great your power, you're still just a beast. The strongest serpent of Ryuji Cave? In my eyes, you're nothing but a worm. Shoo! With speed surpassing the limits of the world, Ryujiro's strike created shockwaves that extended several meters behind him. It wasn't mere body flicker jutsu but the eruption of ultimate power. As Manda's colossal tail swept towards him, blood gushed out like a fountain, and the massive tail danced in the air, raining blood upon the earth. Boom! Like a small mountain, the enormous tail crashed onto the ground, creating ripples. Manda let out a sharp cry of pain, and Orochimaru, standing atop its head, almost lost balance due to its agonized struggles. But the next moment, Orochimaru trembled and almost instinctively jumped down from Manda's head. The fear and sense of impending doom made Orochimaru, who felt the threat of death for the first time, break out in a cold sweat. Ryujiro's figure turned into afterimages as sword strikes, akin to a storm, showered Manda body. Each strike accompanied by the sharp sound of air friction. Shu! Calmly, Ryujiro returned to his original position, sheathing his sword. At this moment, when Jiraiya and Tsunade arrived and saw Manda colossal tail, their eyes shrank in shock. Tsunade suddenly knelt on the ground, her face pale as she collapsed. The sight of blood triggered Tsunade's hemophobia once again. Anyone with hemophobia like Tsunade would become virtually useless in combat upon seeing blood. Of course, Tsunade's hemophobia stemmed from losing her loved ones, including her partner and brother, in the Third Great Ninja War. Despite being a medical ninja, she couldn't save them. Manda Tail? This boy, Ryujiro, is too ruthless. He actually cut off Manda Tail? He's nothing but a beast. Jiraiya looked at the huge purple tail with palpitations. However, what followed was even more shocking. Crack, crack. Like the sound of rocks shattering, cracks of various sizes appeared on Manda's stiffened body. When Jiraiya saw blood oozing out, the sight shocked him. The bloody scene assaulted his vision. Bang. With a loud explosion, Manda's body burst open, like a firework, and its limbs and flesh danced in the air like a bloody rain, turning into a torrential storm that swept the surrounding area. The scene gave the impression of being amidst a sea of corpses and blood. The immense amount of blood seemed to wash over the surrounding forests like waves. Jiraiya's mind went blank, looking at the crimson chunks before him, his brain ceased to function. Manda. Did it just die like that? The thick smell of blood in the air made Jiraiya feel like he was on a battlefield where thousands had perished. No. Tsunade. Jiraiya anxiously looked at Tsunade. By now, Tsunade was covered in blood, and the smell of blood overwhelmed her senses. Compared to her earlier fearful expression, she now seemed completely numb. Tsunade. Pull yourself together. Hey. Wake up. Jiraiya shook Tsunade, and with each shake, the water-like substance on Tsunade's body created ripples. Bang. A punch landed on Jiraiya's face and ear. Jiraiya was sent flying again, while Tsunade, with a dark face, looked at Jiraiya, who was thrown several meters away. Looking at her blood-covered hands and the massive blood chunks scattered around, Tsunade seemed strangely unaffected. Was her hemophobia cured? Watching the fresh blood before them, even Tsunade's eyes were tainted with the viscous blood of Manda. Inside the Ryuchi cave, lying on a stone couch, the white snake sage, smoking a pipe, suddenly widened his serpent eyes. The aura of Manda disappeared? What happened after Orochimaru's called Manda? What exactly could have happened in such a short time? Meanwhile, Orochimaru, with a face full of fear, stared at Manda chopped into pieces. From the moment it happened to now, it had been less than a minute. Manda died at Ryujiro's hands just like that. The next moment, Ryujiro used body flicker jutsu to appear in front of Orochimaru. At this moment, no one noticed Ryujiro. Jiraiya was still in the dirt, not yet climbed up, and Tsunade, no longer fearing blood, momentarily didn't pay attention to this side. Ryujiro leaned forward and moved his mouth. Instantly, Orochimaru's eyes contracted, and his face changed dramatically as he looked at Ryujiro. At the same time, the next second, a dazzling and murderous blade flashed in an instant. The brief burst of killing intent caused the temperature to plummet suddenly, as if immersed in an icy world. Orochimaru's eyes, full of wildness and coldness, gradually lost focus, and stunning blood blossomed in the air. Only at this moment did both Jiraiya and Tsunade's gazes shift to Ryujiro. 
Orochimaru. Orochimaru fell backward, a terrifying bloodstain appearing on his chest, blood still continuously flowing out. This strike completely severed Orochimaru's vitality. Jiraiya and Tsunade hurried over. Jiraiya looked at Tsunade crouching on the ground. Tsunade shook her head as she looked at Jiraiya. Orochimaru is really dead. After saying this, Jiraiya and Tsunade silently looked at Ryujiro. The methods of this young man in front of them were truly frightening. Decisive in killing, without any hesitation, Orochimaru, no matter how weakened his strength was, was still one of the Sanin. At least, even a Jonin would feel fear because of Orochimaru's reputation. But Ryujiro was unmoved. Compared to Orochimaru, Ryujiro's wildness was far too different. This kid gave the impression more like a ferocious beast. But why did both Jiraiya and Tsunade feel Orochimaru's death was too sudden? Even feeling somewhat eerie. Tsunade-sama. Shizun and Naruto also rushed over. The commotion here was too great, even Naruto and Shizun couldn't help but want to come over and see what was going on. That's Orochimaru. Shizun's face changed dramatically as she looked at Orochimaru's corpse. Orochimaru was actually dead. What happened just now? Tsunade-sama. Shizun pointed at Orochimaru's corpse with trembling fingers. Tsunade sighed and looked at Ryujiro with a complicated expression. It was this brat? What? Shizun looked shocked at the blood-drenched Ryujiro. He actually killed Orochimaru? Orochimaru was one of the legendary Sanin, and his strength was almost equal to Jiraiya and Tsunade. Shizun glanced at the blood around them. This is? Shizun suddenly widened her eyes, and the fear in her eyes became even more intense. Manda. It's the body of Manda? Yes, the kid killed Manda too. Tsunade added from behind. Oh my god. Ha. Huh. Shizun took a sharp breath, but because of the strong smell of blood in the air, she felt a little uncomfortable, suddenly feeling nauseous. Tsunade, your fear of blood? Jiraiya looked surprised at Tsunade. Tsunade put her hands on her hips and sighed, saying, Yeah, I'm surprised too. It seems like my fear of blood is gone. What? Tsunade-sama, your fear is gone? What's going on? Tsunade shrugged helplessly and said, I don't know either. Ryujiro squinted his eyes, somewhat surprised, looking at Tsunade. Has Tsunade's hemophobia actually disappeared? In the original anime, Tsunade's hemophobia was cured, but it was because of Naruto. Could it be that the scene just now had such a great psychological impact on Tsunade that she was no longer afraid of blood? Brat, you deliberately distracted me and Jiraiya earlier. What deep-seated hatred do you have with Orochimaru to want to kill him so badly? Both Jiraiya and Tsunade focused on Ryujiro. If Tsunade and Jiraiya had been focusing on Ryujiro from start to finish just now, even if Ryujiro took action, they would have stopped him. Orochimaru was not only their comrade but also a rogue ninja of the village, and his life or death involved many decisions of the Konoha village higher-ups. And Orochimaru might also know some things about the Konoha village that others didn't know. It's either he dies or I die. Sooner or later, he would have died by my hands. I just made that day come earlier. He sees me as his vessel. Vessel? Jiraiya and Tsunade also understood the meaning behind Ryujiro's words. Orochimaru had long set his sights on Ryujiro? Perhaps besides this reason, there was no other motive that could make Ryujiro harbor such killing intent toward Orochimaru. Orochimaru's forbidden jutsus were depraved. Ryujiro actually killed someone as powerful as the Sanin. Damn it. Ryujiro, what have you been doing all these years? When can I surpass your strength? Naruto clenched his fists, looking unwilling. Ryujiro walked up and flicked Naruto's forehead hard. Ouch. That hurts. Ryujiro teased, Naruto, you will surely surpass me one day. Hearing this Naruto became happy and before he could reply Ryujiro continued. But maybe that day will come in your next life. Ah. Damn it. Ryujiro, just wait, one day I'll pay you back for bullying me. Naruto rubbed his forehead, glaring at Ryujiro. Things happened too suddenly, to the extent that Jiraiya didn't know how to bring up the matter after going back. Orochimaru actually died at Ryujiro's hands, and Jiraiya felt strange about Ryujiro's feelings. This little monster couldn't be viewed with the eyes of an ordinary child. Jiraiya felt Ryujiro's depth was too profound, especially this time, evading them and wanting to kill Orochimaru. This series of actions were too weird. There seems to be something shady about it. It's just that Jiraiya felt a little emotional. It was really ridiculous that his classmate at that time died at the hands of such a young boy. Ryujiro, what did you do when you were following Guy? Why do you have such a terrible murderous intent? Too much of this aura is not a good thing. You will lose yourself and gradually become obsessed with killing and derive pleasure from it. Ryujiro glanced at Jiraiya and reported to Jiraiya about the mission with Guy and the number of ninjas he had killed over the years. The more Jiraiya listened, the more frightened he became. He felt that what was scary about Ryujiro was how he killed these ninjas but the lack of expression on his face when he said these things. Instead of showing remorse or empathy, when he revealed that information, Ryujiro's eyes showed no fluctuation. For Ryujiro, these ninjas were nothing more than a number. In this world, whether it's people or numbers, none of it matters. It's either you die, or I die. Ryujiro's sole focus was on enhancing his own strength, swiftly advancing through the templates, unlocking the second template. 
Merely having the Myhawk template was insufficient for dominating the entire ninja world. What he needed was a template even more terrifying than the Six Paths. After slaying Orochimaru, Ryujiro's Myhawk template increased by 0.5%. Though not much, Ryujiro was satisfied. It's worth noting that if he were to only refine his swordsmanship through battles within his spiritual space and with the Myhawk, he would need to go through at least thousands of battles to gain that 0.5%. In the later stages, it would be impossible to rapidly progress through the templates as he did before by simply engaging in continuous battles. Ryujiro's development of armament hockey, observation hockey and conqueror's hockey had recently hit a bottleneck. He had reached a high-level mastery in advanced armament hockey and conqueror's hockey techniques like emission, internal destruction and infusion but he wanted to completely master it. But it was proving really difficult for him as he had no one guiding him, his only source of knowledge regarding all these techniques were just coming from the One Piece anime. He had also tried to improve these techniques by fighting Maiha continuously, but that also didn't give him desired results. If he could master it, perhaps his strength would increase a few notches. As for the future vision of observation hockey, aside from those with innate talent, reaching that level was no easy task, but he had made somewhat progress in that area. His current strength was beyond that of Akage, he was about to level of powerhouses like Hashirama and Madara. Perhaps only a ninja like the fourth rakage of Kumogakure, with lightning-like speed, could pose somewhat of a threat to Ryujiro. No even rakage won't pose that much of threat to him. If it were a tailed beast, Ryujiro could still manage it. Whether he could sever a tailed beast bomb, even Ryujiro himself wasn't sure if he could accomplish it as he had never tried it before. But he wasn't too worried about it, because he knew with this level of Myhawk template unlocked, right now only someone like Madara could challenge him in the entire shinobi world. A tailed beast bomb was a cannon of highly compressed chakra energy. Once unleashed, destroying a small mountain was child's play. In the quiet of the night, Ryujiro rose to his feet. The surroundings were incredibly serene, only the bustling chirping of insects could be heard. That guy Orochimaru? After killing him, Ryujiro didn't receive any notification from the system, nor did his progress increase. Orochimaru hadn't truly died. In the original work, Sasuke revived Orochimaru from Enko's body using the cursed seal and some of his DNA. Perhaps the condition for resurrection only required someone marked with the cursed seal of heaven. Ryujiro felt that Orochimaru's revival wasn't truly resurrection. It was as if the cursed seal of heaven acted as a checkpoint, Orochimaru merely divided his body and soul, leaving some cells in the person he marked with the seal. Through these cells, Orochimaru could achieve a certain degree of resurrection. After all, Orochimaru mastered core technology. If Orochimaru had truly died so easily, it would be too dull. This was also an experiment conducted by Ryujiro. Moreover, no one knew what he and Orochimaru had discussed in the end. For a mad scientist like Orochimaru, he couldn't refuse what Ryujiro said, that is, the artificial creation of Kekiai Genkai. It could even produce a large number of cloned Kekiai Genkai. In the sequel Boruto, Shin is not a member of the Uchiha clan. Originally, he was one of Orochimaru's experiments, possessing a special physique that allowed him to undergo organ transplants without rejection. Later, he mass-produced cloned individuals. The cloning of Kekiai Genkai was feasible. Although Shin wasn't a member of the Uchiha clan, as long as he received Uchiha DNA and had no rejection, he could activate the Sharingan, and even the Mangekyo Sharingan. With Shin's cells as a medium, coupled with the cells of Hashirama Senju, Ryujiro couldn't imagine if his desired outcome could truly be achieved. The final evolution of the Sharingan is the Rinnegan. To awaken the Rinnegan, the cells of Hashirama Senju are indispensable. Of course, awakening the Rinnegan is not so easy. It's worth noting that among the Uchiha clan, only Madara Uchiha and Sasuke Uchiha have awakened the Rinnegan. If awakening the Rinnegan only required the cells of Hashirama Senju, then the eyes known as the Eye of Six Paths would be too cheap. Ryujiro didn't care when Orochimaru would be resurrected. He knew that once Orochimaru was revived, he would come looking for him. As for how long it would take, Ryujiro had plenty of time. For Ryujiro, both the Sharingan and Rinnegan held no allure. The reason he tempted Orochimaru was to help Hinata evolve her Byakugan to its pinnacle, to awaken the Tensigan. This way, he wouldn't have to worry excessively about the people around him. Perhaps by then, Ryujiro might have unlocked a template even higher than the Myhawk. Under Jiraiya's and Naruto's repeated persuasion, Tsunade agreed to take on the role of the fifth Hokage of Konoha. At this moment, Ryujiro also came down from upstairs. Tsunade looked at Ryujiro with a knowing smile. Kid, when I officially assume the position of the fifth Hokage, come join the Umbu. The Umbu was originally established by the second Hokage, Toborama Senju, as a department directly under the Hokage's command. Generally, it was responsible for protecting the Hokage and preventing foreign invasions into Konoha. Ryujiro glanced lightly at Tsunade, hands behind his back. Wait until you've become the fifth Hokage of Konoha. Jiraiya's words were just wishful thinking. The higher-ups in Konoha haven't agreed to this yet. Although we, the Jonans of Konoha, have no objections, inheriting the position of Hokage won't be so easy for you, huh?
Tsunade turned her head with a fierce gaze, locking onto Jiraiya. Jiraiya, is what this little brat is saying, the truth. Didn't you say the village had already agreed to let me take the position of the fifth Hokage? Ah, ha ha ha. Tsunade, it's just a matter of time. Those stubborn old guys in the higher-ups will definitely agree to you inheriting the position of Hokage. Besides, you're the granddaughter of the first Hokage, you're practically the princess of Kanoha. Jiraiya chuckled awkwardly, retreating cautiously step by step. Jiraiya. Jiraiya realized the situation wasn't right and bolted. Jiraiya, stop right there. Tsunade, spare me. Ah, don't hit my face. Ah, bam 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 outside, passers-by hurriedly retreated to their homes. Even in the taverns, one could feel the commotion outside. Inside a tavern, an elderly man with a somewhat wretched face sipped his drink, a smile appearing on his face. Ah, it's great to be young. On the journey, Jiraiya's face was swollen like a pig's head, with several large bumps on his forehead. When Naruto looked at it, he couldn't help but burst out laughing. As a result, Naruto now had three large bumps on his forehead just like Jiraiya. Despite his dissatisfaction, Naruto didn't dare to do anything against Jiraiya because in the end, he would just end up getting fixed by Jiraiya again. No matter what, Jiraiya was still Naruto's teacher, and Naruto regarded Jiraiya as his own master. Soon, Ryujiro and the others returned to the village. What happened next was not Ryujiro's concern, the competition for the position of Hokage had nothing to do with him. He only wanted to improve his own strength and unlock his second template. Ryujiro Kuen welcome home? Hinata always wore a gentle smile on her face when meeting Ryujiro. A smile appeared on Ryujiro's face as he held Hinata's hand and walked into the Hyuga house. Unconsciously, Ryujiro seemed to have become a part of the Hyuga family. The Hyuga family also deeply respected Ryujiro from the bottom of their hearts. This young man had become a jonin at such a young age, and he had even repelled a tailed beast and a summoning beast when the San and Sound villages invaded Kanoha. Now, Ryujiro probably didn't even know that the villagers of Kanoha already regarded him as the hero who saved the village. That guy Jiraiya actually managed to bring Tsunade back. The position of the fifth Hokage is mine, and no one can take it from me. Ryujiro, it's time to deal with that brat. The news of Tsunade's return to the village spread throughout the upper echelons of Kanoha shortly after she arrived. Jiraiya summoned a meeting of the high-level officials and proposed that Tsunade be made the fifth Hokage. The Hokage advisors, Hamura Mitokado and Koharu Yudatane, had no objections to Tsunade inheriting the position of Hokage. In fact, Danzo had approached them privately as well. However, in the end, Danzo efforts were in vain, and both of them felt that Danzo's character was not suitable for the position of Hokage. They were surprised that Jiraiya had actually managed to bring Tsunade back, and even more so that Tsunade was willing to take on the role of the fifth Hokage. Both Tsunade's reputation and her identity qualified her for the position of Hokage. The two Hokage advisors had no objections, and naturally, no one else opposed. The news that the fifth Hokage had been confirmed spread throughout the entire village. Valley of the End, Ryujiro stood atop it, gazing at the dense forest below, his hand resting on his sword hilt. A figure leaped out from behind Ryujiro. Half of this person's head was wrapped in bandages, revealing a murky eye, and his right hand was wrapped in bandages, emitting a sinister aura. Danzo, what is it? Haha Ryujiro, I knew I didn't misjudge you. Danzo's deep gaze admired Ryujiro. I won't beat around the bush. As long as you support me becoming Hokage, you will be the next Hokage. Join my route, the people here are not worthy of your talents as a jonin. Only by joining the roots of Kanoha can we grow stronger trees. Danzo pointed at the Hokage rock. As long as you support me, your face will definitely be on the Hokage rock in the future. After saying that, Danzo burst out with a fierce momentum. No matter what, Danzo was not a simple figure in the ninja world. However, Ryujiro remained calm and composed, showing no reaction to Danzo's words. Danzo, you're mistaken. I have no interest in the position of Hokage. In fact, the position of Hokage means nothing to me. The Hokage is merely a worker of the village, a position bound by constraints. What I see is something higher. Ryujiro's conqueror Haki burst forth in an instant. Danzo widened his eyes, looking at Ryujiro in shock. He hadn't expected that in Ryujiro's eyes, even the position of Hokage was worthless. The position he had coveted for years was deemed worthless by Ryujiro. I underestimated you. I didn't expect you to have such ambitions. But if you help me become Hokage, in the future, if you face any trouble, you and I will be allies. Ryujiro sneered. Not needed. He looked into the distance, then turned his disdainful gaze to Danzo. Do you know, Danzo? Both you and I are too insignificant for the entire ninja world. Why has the ninja world never been unified, with wars between the major nations continuing for years? It's because we lack strength. Only when our own strength is strong enough to fear nothing, like the first Hokage Hashirama Senju, can Kanoha have the possibility of unifying the entire ninja world and bringing lasting peace to the entire ninja world. Boom! Danzo's heart trembled incessantly. He looked at Ryujiro in shock, unable to calm his heart for a long time. This was just a 14-year-old kid, but the words he spoke were completely unmatched by his age. Genius, perhaps this was what genius looked like. No. 
A 14-year-old Kage-level ninja was already a monster. Danzo sighed unwillingly. His figure slowly disappeared into the dense forest. Ryujiro looked at Danzo's disappearing figure, a disdainful smile playing at the corner of his mouth. The position of Hokage seemed great indeed, but in the fourth Great Ninja War, when Uchiha Madara was resurrected using Edo Tensei, even the combined strength of the five Kages was not enough to match Uchiha Madara. They couldn't even give Uchiha Madara a good fight. Perhaps only his best friend, Hashirama, could dance before Madara. Night fell. Rarely returning to his own home, Ryujiro tidied up his room. For the past few years, he had basically been living in the Hyuga house. Part of it was to help train Hinata, and the other part was because his own home was too simple. Just as Ryujiro was about to lie down, a powerful aura suddenly appeared within his sensory range, and the location of this aura was on the roof of Ryujiro's house. This aura. There was no doubt that it belonged to a Kage-level ninja no even higher, and this aura was much stronger than Tsunade's. Ryujiro picked up his sword and pushed open the door, leaping onto the roof. When he saw the figure in front of him clearly, Ryujiro's face showed a surprised expression, and his heart filled with alertness. Because he knew very well how powerful the person in front of him was. Achiha Abito. The distinctive attire of the Akatsuki consisting of black cloaks with red clouds, a red interior, and a chin-high collar, adorned with a swirl-patterned orange mask, exuded a chilling aura, causing shivers down the spine. Just as sharp as Itachi described, Haha, let me introduce myself first, I am Uchiha Madara. Anyone familiar with the name Uchiha Madara would immediately pale at the mention of it. He was a powerful ninja from the Warring States period, also one of the founders of Konoha. The only one who could stand against him was the first Hokage of Konoha, Hashirama Senju. He was a legendary figure. Ryujiro's expression remained unchanged upon seeing Abito, he assumed Ryujiro was too stunned to say anything. However, in that instant, Ryujiro couldn't help but chuckle. Suddenly, the cold aura coming from Abito intensified, and his gaze towards Ryujiro grew colder. What do you mean by that? Ryujiro looked disdainfully at Abito and said lightly, nothing much. If you were truly Uchiha Madara, I might not have laughed out loud, you're just hiding your weakness behind the name of Uchiha Madara. Do you think you're powerful enough now to control everything? Right now, you're just a puppet under Uchiha Madara, Uchiha Abito. In an instant, the terrifying killing intent emanating from Abito surged towards Ryujiro like a black tide. Abito's gaze became solemn. You know my identity? Who are you exactly? Someone young like Ryujiro couldn't possibly know his identity. Could Ryujiro be someone who survived from another era, perhaps due to some forbidden jutsu that reversed aging? Is your identity hard to guess? Achiha Madara is a figure from the Warring States period. It was he who, despite his strength and strangeness, could not escape the laws of nature, which dictate that one day he will age and die. And if you really are Achiha Madara? With his arrogant personality, I doubt he would approach me so calmly. As for your identity? There is nothing in the entire ninja world that I don't know. Abito's eyes suddenly contracted, and his gaze towards Ryujiro became more serious. Indeed, this guy was as mysterious as Itachi described. However, he didn't take Ryujiro's words to heart. The ninja world was so vast that even Madara had many things he couldn't comprehend. In his eyes, Ryujiro was just trying to assert his dominance. I didn't expect such a monster to be born in this era, Abito said in a deep voice. Ryujiro chuckled lightly, if we talk about monsters, I think you should be the one. You're neither human nor ghost now. And now you want to fight me? Such provocation undoubtedly trampled on Abito's pride, but he forcefully suppressed his killing intent. For so many years, no one had dared to speak to him like this. He was no longer the weak Abito. Now, he had the power to change the world. That plan? Could reunite him with Rin. Abito's figure slowly disappeared from the rooftop, as if he had become invisible without leaving a body. But the next moment, the disappeared Abito suddenly appeared behind Ryujiro. Abito's Sharingan spun, and a tremendous suction force attempted to pull Ryujiro into another dimension. But how could Ryujiro not know Abito's abilities? Without saying a word, he used body flicker jutsu and appeared in another corner of the rooftop. This action shook Abito once again. He looked at Ryujiro with a gloomy gaze. Do you know my abilities? I said, there's nothing in the ninja world that I don't know. Naturally, I know your abilities, Ryujiro said lightly with a smile. Abito's gaze darkened as he scrutinized Ryujiro. I'll remember you, Ryujiro. Next time, you'll die by my hands, haha, <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it. Facing Abito's threat, Ryujiro showed no fear, even a hint of amusement. After all, even after Madara's death, Abito couldn't escape his control. Looking at the faint smile on Ryujiro's lips, Abito's body trembled visibly. But in the end, Abito suppressed the urge to attack Ryujiro. Ryujiro was too mysterious. Not only did he know his identity, but he also knew about his Sharingan abilities. Those who didn't reveal their hand were always the most terrifying. The space around Abito began to distort, forming a vortex, with Abito's Sharingan as the center point, exerting a powerful suction force, pulling Abito's body into another dimension. Night returned to its usual tranquility. Abito had left. 
Within the range of Ryujiro's observation hockey, there was no trace of Abido's presence. Although Ryujiro didn't regard Abido highly, Abido's strength was unquestionable. Even if Ryujiro wanted to deal with Abido, it wouldn't be easy. The abilities of his men Gekyo Sharingan and Jinjutsu would affect Ryujiro's strength. If Ryujiro wanted to kill Abido, he must be sure to strike with a single blow. Even though his strength had reached the Kage level, there were still many unknown abilities in the ninja world that posed a threat to Ryujiro. The progress of unlocking the templates must be accelerated. He had to unlock the second template immediately, preferably a character template from a dimension other than the Naruto world. If he continued to pursue the pinnacle of swordsmanship like someone on the level of Maihawk, it wouldn't be beneficial for Ryujiro. At least in other aspects, Ryujiro hoped the second template could bring him some additional abilities. Shortly afterward, the position of the fifth Hokage was also confirmed, even if Danzo opposed it, it was of no avail. One of Tsunade's first actions as the fifth Hokage was to dissolve Danzo's root. Tsunade was well aware. Danzo said it was all for the sake of Kanoha, but in reality, they were only for his own ambition. Tsunade was well aware of how many dirty deeds Danzo had done behind her back. The dissolution of Root completely diluted Danzo's power. Of course, Tsunade didn't know what crazy things Danzo, who had been forced into a corner, would do. Ryujiro arrived at the Hokage's office and pushed open the door, seeing Shizun's helpless expression. At this moment, Tsunade had her feet on the desk, looking nothing like a Hokage, especially with her two mountains at another angle, fully showing their enormous shape. Shizun said helplessly, Lady Tsunade, Jonin Ryujiro is here. She naively thought that Lady Tsunade would pay more attention to her image after becoming Hokage, but it seemed she was still too young. The bold posture of Tsunade made Ryujiro involuntarily take a deep breath. The striking presence caught Ryujiro's eye. Despite Tsunade being in her fifties, due to ninjutsu, her appearance remained youthful, even her figure showed no signs of change from her early years, except for that massive. Kid, where are your eyes wandering? Tsunade noticed Ryujiro's gaze and looked at him with a stern look. Ryujiro coughed awkwardly. You're just too bold, Lady Tsunade. You little brat. Tsunade glared at Ryujiro angrily, as if she was about to teach him a lesson. Shizun, noticing the situation, quickly intervened. Lady Tsunade, please remember your position. You're the fifth Hokage, and, what Ryujiro said is right. You should also consider your own image. Shizun, you. Tsunade gave Shizun an irritated look but then settled back into her seat. I wonder what the Hokage-sama wants to see me for, Ryujiro sat on the sofa, showing no respect towards the Hokage. Tsunade's lips twitched slightly. This kid really doesn't take her, the fifth Hokage, seriously. Do you remember what I said before? As long as I become the fifth Hokage, I'll let me join the Umbu. Since the disbandment of Root, I plan to expand the Umbu. Ryujiro, join Umbu as a captain. Umbu captain. Shizun's eyes widened in disbelief, looking at Ryujiro. How about it, kid? Tsunade looked at Ryujiro meaningfully. Okay, I'll take that position as captain, Ryujiro unexpectedly agreed. Even Tsunade was taken aback. In her opinion, Ryujiro wouldn't agree so easily. As Tsunade was still processing, she sighed and ran her hand through her hair, looking at Ryujiro with some annoyance. Kid, you're unpredictable. Ha, huh? what? Forget it, it's nothing. Tsunade decided not to say anything more. Now that you've agreed, you'll join as the captain of a squad. You should have some understanding of the Umbu by now, right? Ryujiro nodded lightly. Once you're in the Umbu, you can't act under your own name. Before that, think of a code name. A code name, huh? After pondering for a moment, Ryujiro said, Hawk. Hawk. Tsunade didn't understand the significance of Ryujiro choosing this code name. Then you'll be called Hawk. Report to Umbu in three days, and I'll show you your team members. Ryujiro nodded without any objection. After Ryujiro left, Tsunade muttered to herself, her chin resting on her hand. What a strange kid. Ryujiro agreed to join the Umbu for a simple reason. It's a unique organization under the command of the Hokage. The tasks performed by the Umbu are mostly covert, either assassination missions, espionage, or protecting the Hokage. The main responsibility of the Umbu is to protect the Hokage. Moreover, at this time, the situation in the ninja world is becoming more unstable. Recently, the Hidden Sand Village seems to have sent an envoy to negotiate with the Kanoha Village. The voices of the villagers naturally oppose negotiation with the Hidden Sand Village, especially those whose families were destroyed by the Sand and Sound Ninjas. They wish that the Kanoha Village could wipe out the Sand Village. But such actions would undoubtedly lead to war between the two countries. Now that Tsunade has succeeded as the Hokage, the village elders were discussing negotiation matters. Ryujiro hopes to undertake more dangerous missions to help him quickly progress in his role. Everything that is happening now is happening much earlier than in the original storyline. Orochimaru has already died at his own hands, and it's unknown if Sasuke will still defect from the village. Ha! At this moment, Ryujiro suddenly stopped in his tracks. This aura. He's back. In an instant, Ryujiro's figure disappeared, leaving only a faint afterimage in place. You're not from this village, why are you here? 
Asuma and Kurinai looked solemnly at the mysterious ninja in front of them, wearing a straw hat and a red cloud cloak. The pressure and aura emanating from these two individuals were truly intimidating. It's been a long time, Asuma-san, Kurinai-san. The moment Itachi removed his hat, Asuma and Kurinai's faces changed instantly. It's you, Itachi Uchiha. The instant they saw Itachi's red eyes, Asuma and Kurinai broke out in a cold sweat. As Itachi introduced himself, Kisame also removed his straw hat, his shark-like eyes filled with hostility, adding even more pressure on Asuma and Kurinai. US rank rogue ninjas appearing in the village, what are you planning? Asuma had already taken out his kunai. Itachi-san, can I kill this man? Kisame, don't forget our purpose. Don't cause too much trouble. Alright, let's see if you're worthy of being taken down. A battle was about to erupt. Asuma resisted the attacks from Kisame, but Kisame's monstrous strength made Asuma's face pale. Coupled with the lack of physical strength, a piece of flesh was cut off from Asuma's right arm leaving a large chunk of flesh, blood continuously flowing. Asuma covered the wound on his right arm, looking at Kisame with a grim face. Careless, he didn't expect the opponent's weapon to be so strange. Kurinai used Jinjutsu against Itachi, which was simply futile in front of Itachi. Because when it came to Jinjutsu, who could surpass Itachi? When rebounded by Jinjutsu, she managed to break free from it through self-harm, but still got kicked away by Itachi. Just as Itachi was about to make another move, he suddenly stopped, his actions becoming somewhat solemn as he looked at the figure that had suddenly appeared before him. Ryujiro looked at Itachi and Kisame with a faint smile. Long time no see, Itachi. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.